There it is. It just went live. So we got about one hour. It's Atmos Mixing Night. Join us live for a two hour Atmos extravaganza. Enter confused, exit informed. We've assembled a dream team of Atmos professionals, including Mark Abrams, host of the Pure Mix Great Big Plugin Show, consumer tech YouTuber Techno Dad, Atmos mastering engineer Jonathan Garcia, Atmos recording engineer Nolan Monocle, and the legendary immersive mixer Rock AM, with help from IK Multimedia, Audio Movers, and Sennheiser. Tonight, we break Tonight down we break everything down you everything need to know about Atmos, Atmos as a Atmos consumer as mixer and creator. We are broadcasting, we are broadcasting in, binaural. in binaural. You can listen normally on speakers, on speakers binaural in headphones, or, or pick up the Audio Mover 714 link and stream to your Atmos array live. Ask your Atmos questions live on the chat roll. Tonight's immersive roundtable will take questions as well. Tap in a friend, fire up your studio, <laughs> it's mixing night. Welcome, Welcome to Mixing, to Mixing Night, Night, everybody. everybody. We, are we are coming to you from, from Vatmo Studios, Studios in Cincinnati, Ohio. Ohio. I'm, Ken I'm Ken Lewis. I've worked on a few records, records that you might have, might have heard before. before. I'm Exterior Atmos, and, Atmos, and my room here, here is like a life-size Apple, Apple Vision Pro. Pro. I got three projectors that just wrap everything around me. It's super visual. And when I mix, I immerse myself in something visual that, you know, inspires me during the mix. Um, <coughs> i got to give a give huge shout-out shout out to, to uh, the, the whole, whole crew that, that put this whole show together tonight. tonight. Legendary, Legendary, everybody. And if you, and love, if you love Mixing Night, night you will love our plugins. Plug we're, we're running a big spring sale right now through the weekend. Lock up! But let's address the elephant in the room up top. Why, Atmos? Why? Is it a huge new income stream for everybody? No, no, probably not. <coughs> is it, uh, it going to replace stereo? No. I mean, certainly no, no time soon. Uh, is it going to stick around? Is it going to die as a format? I think it's going to stick around because Apple and Dolby are both behind it, and they are building long-term product lines for it. Um, but uh, why does it always sound like crap whenever I hear some of my favorite songs in Atmos? That seems to be the general beat, uh, beef. But believe me, we all understand, in my opinion, Atmos is an audiophile format treated like a general consumer format right now. There's been a massive push by Apple and Dolby to create Atmos versions of your favorite songs, but not enough quality control on that and not enough listener education and mixer education to know uh, what you're hearing and how to mix it. So many of you hear Atmos and you don't like it, Trust me, we get it. <laughs> We're the ones trying to help make it the great format that we all know it can be. The first time I heard Atmos uh, mix on speakers, I was utterly blown away. I just could not believe it. And I thought, you know, this is how music always should have been heard from the center as the song envelops you instead of at a distance or just enclosed right here. Uh, and so one of the purposes of this show is to dispel Atmos myths, to give you a street level view of our opinion of what's really going on and show you actionable steps that you can take to get started in Atmos. Uh, it's going to be a super fun night. Uh, we're broadcasting binaural tonight, so listen in headphones for the full experience. Speakers are fine. Uh, we, but we also have uh, an audio mover stream pinned to the description of the video you are watching right now. There's also a video telling you uh, how to set up your audio mover stream so that if you have your own Atmo studio and you're, you can stream us live directly to your speakers and hear what we are hearing in this room. It's pretty darn cool. Um, <clears throat> so that's in the description. That link is. Uh, burr, 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 uh, lots of actually the description is loaded with goodies tonight. Um, and as we go through the show, you'll see those things are all in the description. Uh, before I start my sprint mix, let me introduce to you Atmos mixer Mark Abrams uh, from the great big plug-in show on Pure Mix and Technodad, who is a consumer Atmos specialist and co-creator of the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit for the Home Theater Atmos Calibration. And Technodad will provide invaluable insights into the end consumer uh, who we all do this for. And uh, so welcome both of you, Mark and hey, hey, hey. Technodad to Mixing Night. That's, that's What's up? Thank you for having me, man. Oh, man. Oh, man. It's, it's been a crazy, crazy cook-up cook for, for all of this. this. Um, um, Mark came down, came down uh, drove a significant way, and you flew out from Cali for this. So that's right. That's, that's right. right. Came from Cali. We are, we are all, do this. all at most diehards here, and we all have a, a unified mission, basically, to help everybody else level up. Um, yeah. And I think we have all felt generally like there's not a ton of support in Atmos land. Mm -hmm. um, and uh, we fixed, you know, we're hoping to change that tonight. So thanks right. for tuning in. And speaking of level up, can we put the levels up? I'm, I'm here and we need to bump it up like 12 dB. Can we do that down there, guys? Um, fellas in the, in the broadcast booth, turn up the live stream. Turn up the live stream audio. That's what 
Uh, thank you for uh, letting us know. You know, we're, we, we've been prepping like mad, yeah, but we never point. really know. <laughs> oh, great. <laughs> thank you, Joe. He's telling me, hey, yo, you so um, in my tradition of sprint mixing, uh, I'm going to do a sprint mix of Taj Ferrant, The House Always Wins. And I've put Mark through sprint mixes here before. Now, what was your experience with sprints? It's the best. And I've actually, like, just kind of made it a practice routine ever nice. since then. i got to hook you up with more of them then. Yes, absolutely. Oh, that's so cool. Yeah. We'll yeah, talk about it on uh, Mix Camp. I'm doing this a lot. Sweet. Tell people to try it. I, I did one. Yesterday. He made me do one yesterday. He's like, it's your turn. And I was like, uh. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Techno Dad doesn't know Pro Tools. Uh, he does mix Atmos, so he's very proficient in Atmos, but he doesn't know Pro Tools. So we started him, and we had him do the House Always Wins Atmos. It wasn't well, really I a sprint. With, I actually got done with the stereo, so he has a 10-minute timer. Yeah. So in three minutes, I was done with the stereo. I was like, okay, let's try Atmos. I'm like, I'm, I'm not going to make this any better. <laughs> sure, let's do it. So it was a lot of fun. It was great working in Pro Tools. Finally, I get to kind of, like, check it out you guys are always doing yeah. well that was a ton of fun uh hopefully i will be able to pull this off um in a meager 10 minutes um come on where's my timer can there? we do things to distract you like yeah, um uh i suppose you probably could can I um plug your controller? <laughs> <laughs> if, guys am i supposed to be on mix in the control room yeah. uh, on dad man yeah. all right What am I doing wrong, yeah, fellas? Uh, all the people in the Tier Mix chat, <laughs> thanks for joining in. We're simulcasting on Tier Mix's channel. That's right. That's right. What's going well, on, yeah. everybody? Um, Talk to them. I see, I Talk see to everybody. Him. Joe and Tell's in the chat. We've got Chris Windham, Daniel Miller. We got, actually, this is a combined chat, so there's everybody. Karch is in the house. What's up, Queen B? Queen B. I haven't <laughs> seen you in a long time until my, uh, it's, it, was a, uh, it was a DJ stream of mine. Uh, but we got we got all kinds. Of, who's Sam Champagne? That's oh, that's cool. ours. Yeah, that's, that's cool ours. Hey, Sam. Sam uh, Mark, can can you tell us about the Great Big Plugin Show on Pure Mix? Yeah, yeah. So the Great Big Plugin Show it's a plugin review show on Pure Mix um, where we just pull up stuff that's interesting or things that we like and do a plugin review show. Uh, so that's always a good time. We had Ken on and did Lull Comp pretty recently. Like two Almost. Weeks. Next one is cooking up right now. Yeah, I'm looking, looking in the oven. And we're running a spring sale on uh, uh, Law Comp and Greenhouse right now at Mixing spring Night sale. Audio. Spring sale. <laughs> spring sale. <laughs> yeah. I mean, uh, oh, y'all getting the sauce. I think I left it on the screen. Y'all are really feel, figuring out what's going on. <laughs> <laughs> These are the hassles of live broadcast. What else can I go to in the meantime? Do we have any uh, uh, questions on the chat roll we can go to? See Ben Wave. Oh, who do we have? Hey Shane. So, Sorry uh, guys. Pure Mix folks. Um, thanks for tuning in. This is the guest uh, live stream. Let's go to Techno Dad ADM. Going. Uh, Techno Dad ADM. Yep. Okay, Shimbo's give me one studio, sec. Which is amazing. Have, yeah. and this is the Mixing Night audio show that I keep on telling you guys about on live stream. So I keep telling you to tune in, and now we're here, and we're in this room. So glad are, you're here. are you guys not yeah. here? In, uh, no, every everybody. Oh. There, there we go. My mic is muted. I think, I think your mic's feeding, feeding back. back. It's pretty, pretty hot. hot. Oh, is it hot? Yeah, yeah it's okay. Feeding, feeding back, back into everybody. In oh, okay, so I'll just mute myself. Well, I think we can just turn it down and you might be good. Check, check, check. What's up, Joseph Chucky? Good to see you, dude. Oh, snap. We got some heavies on this. Oh, tonight. snap. Uh, Y'all don't oh, know who tunes into Mixing Night. We got some, like, platinum. No, <laughs> no they take, take the computer people, screen off. Grammy winners. We're going to play, play a Techno Dad ADM. Uh, Techno Dad mixes Atmos more for fun and personal enjoyment, which we all are jealous as hell. We wish that we could be doing that. Uh, when I get hired to do an Atmos mix of a stereo, I'm pretty much married to making the Atmos feel vibe-wise and sonically like the stereo. But you have really dug into... Uh, it's just exploring the edges of the format, what you can really do with it, 
the way that you chop things up and pan sequence it around and the way that you bring emotion through the way that you move instrumentation and vocals through the Atmos space it was it was a really incredible listen here. We're about to fire up uh, a mix for you guys right now and you'll be able to see Techno Dad's ADM on screen. So you'll see the absolute madness that uh, it must have taken you forever to do something. Uh, tell them about. Uh, well, me and my uh, uh, my colleague, Mr. Joe Intel, who's in the chat. You know, we uh, I call him the mad scientist because he figures out really cool stuff. And then I'm like the artist guy. Uh, so like, you know, okay, I'm like, okay, let's try doing this. Let's move this over here. Let's move that over here. Um, you know, people like to you know throw something at the wall and think it's you know and see what sticks. I throw everything everywhere. And it all sticks. Nice. Well, well, it doesn't all it doesn't all stick. <laughs> but you know, that's kind of like the effect I want. I want to, I want to make something really cool. And um, yeah, I want to make something really trippy. And I think the reason why I'm always doing um, EDM is because it lends itself to Atmos, right? There's no preconceived notion of where the swoosh is supposed to be or the bloop bloop or the boo is supposed to. You know? I feel like Rock AM um, uh, prob probably creates like this Rock around uh, 8.45 in about 30 minutes. And uh, Rock really wants to bring uh, creativity from the start into Atmos. And I think from a mixer standpoint, you're doing the exact same thing. You're not, you're not really, really considering yeah. the yeah. at all. No, no not you're at all. immediately into Atmos land, where, whereas the professionals, we have to deliver the stereo first. And right. Then, and, and also, also if, if you, you deliver to streaming, uh, you need to deliver a stereo mix and an Atmos mix. But right. if your Atmos mix folds down well, then you could just fold it down. Right. I don't. I don't know if mine will fold down well. In fact, I think that's the one uh, saving grace for me. I don't care because I don't have to deal right. with it. I'm right. delivering to people with, with a speaker array, and and you know with the the video they can see the, the te they call it the tennis ball view, right? The renderer, and they can see and verify. Okay, these are the sounds, and this is where it's supposed to be, and I'm hearing everything properly. Do you give these ADMs out on your channel? Not ADMs. No. They're usually it's for MP4s for my viewers. Um, okay, go for it. But, but uh, if you, you, um, if you, if you want, want, I can. Uh, you have. I gave you the ADMs that we're gonna play here. Okay. So you can put those up um, if you like for the two songs. Yeah. Okay. Uh, sorry, people. We're gonna have to restart the main Mac. You won't lose us, but. Uh, but we can't do the sprint mix, and we've got to, um, let's see, what can we do? Can we run uh, Marcus Mander? Let's run, let's run uh, Nolan's. Um, yeah, you can run the set the audio mover stream for anybody out there in audio movers land. Uh, should we run that one, or should we run the binaural? Run the binaural that you did the binaural mic demonstration. So if you have headphones on, listen to this video we're about to run. It's gonna show you the experience of tonight. It's gonna to be really awesome. And it's, and it's using, uh, the Audio Movers link is in the description of the video you are watching. It's not in there? Oh, boy. We just restarted the, we just, we just restarted the computer. Uh, did we lose the broadcast? No, no. Oh, oh, we lost the audio we're, we're, movers link. Yeah, the audio movers link. Okay, gotcha. This is what's on the broadcast right, right now. So, so this is the broadcast. Okay, right. Yeah. Is it muted in Pro Tools? No, like from the actual OBS asset. Well, then stop. Go back to us. <laughs> it's all falling apart in our faces. <laughs> you know, that's live broadcast. It's just the way it goes. Um, but we're uh, but we're working to fix it. Uh, can we do the uh, Atmos Essentials? Well, I can't see it, can I? Shit. I can tell people about some Atmos videos on Pyramid. Do that. <laughs> yeah. Mark Abrams is going to guide you to some great Atmos Pyramix. Sweet. Uh, so on uh, Pure Mix, we uh, definitely jumped on the Atmos train early. Uh, a lot of it.
Here, how about this? How about this? Can you hear this? Should I hold down the best? Do you want two microphones? Am I in Atmos? <laughs> <laughs> Am I coming from the height speaker? <laughs> okay. All right, cool. I, tell me if you don't hear me. I just gave some back to the mic. Uh, so, uh, pure mix stuff. So, uh, Gotcha. All right. So I'll hold this thing. Sweet. Uh, so I was saying, I'm Mark from puremix.com, and uh, we make audio tutorials about how to make records with amazing people like Ken, who makes some of the world's greatest sounding records. And uh, we have some stuff. Topic tonight is Atmos. So we have some videos on the site. If you go to Puremix and search Atmos, uh, we have an introduction to Dolby Atmos video with Andrew Sheps, where Andrew talks all about the setup, about his room, and how he did the insane Dante stuff. That um, same thing, like uh, it, things like Ken's doing here. And we have Andrew mixing a Hosier video in Atmos, and then we have one with Fab Dupont mixing um, Snarky Puppies Empire Central, which is really fun. So there's some good content there, and then some old live streams on YouTube. But don't check them out now because we're in the live stream. <laughs> <laughs> Save that for later. Ken, when did you start uh, doing all the Atmos stuff? You were super uh, early. I started Atmos three years ago. As soon as I heard Apple was announcing they were launching a spatial audio streaming service, I was all in. Yeah. 100%. I was like... Oh, the biggest creative company in the entire world is partnering with the biggest surround company in the entire world and launching a streaming service. Oh boy, this is going to be something. I need speakers. And yeah, and it's not like again, I think it's really niche. It's going to be niche for a long time, and I don't think that there's a gigantic income stream for almost anybody uh, as a mixer right now. <clears throat> a few people are caking, but most most people know. I don't think it's worth investing in the speakers until you have learned the headphones and the software and the deliverables and everything that we're trying to teach you tonight, if we ever get off the ground, um, then uh, then you can decide whether or not you want to try and make a pro run at this and invest in all of the speakers and the time learning. and the, I mean, I'll be very honest. If I didn't have Jonathan Garcia, I would not be mixing Atmos. This dude handles the tech around here. It's incredible. And he's also a mastering engineer in Atmos. So if you're mixing Atmos only in headphones and you need to make sure that it's ready for prime time before it goes out to the world, then Jonathan Garcia has got your back. He can master your he can master your Atmos mix and bring it home. He masters all of my Atmos mixes. So if you've heard any of my Atmos mixes, mastered by Jonathan Garcia. And if we can, he'll be joining us on the round table tonight. And uh, <laughs> the man's working hard. The man's working hard on it. Yeah, I don't friends at Apple. I I don't know any of the stuff that like. I, I some somewhat purposefully I try and stay a little bit tech dumb about Atmos because I really want to stay in the creative space and you know I know how to make things sound the way that I want them to uh, in in Atmos but uh, for everything else I you know if you know me and if you watch the show I don't like to think much while I work I'm a pretty <laughs> simple guy oh, so I, I saw know. I saw it last last night it was awesome just to watch you are so fast man I was just like damn what is he doing and it was the um oh you can you talk about it uh, oh no not yet okay oh what he's working on they didn't have here uh they didn't have stems oh, I, can, I can tell the process okay okay so I'm mixing a classic album in Atmos right now um and there's no uh, there's no mixed stems for the original mixes. I have the multi tracks. I don't have any console data. I don't have any recall data. I, all I have is the original multi track. So my job is to take the original multi track and the original master and remix the song from scratch in stereo, stereo to, to as, as exactly, exactly match, match the master, master as, as I possibly can, can in every, every way. way. And and, uh, and then. then I stem it out for Atmos, and then I mix the Atmos version. And, and I, I only get paid for mixing the Atmos version. <laughs> but, but if you don't do the stereo mix first, it will never sound right in Atmos. And 
Uh, so it's a really long process. For me, it's a labor of love because I get to work on some albums that have heavily influenced me. And it's one of the great joys of my career at this point that I get to touch albums that inspired my early career and bring them into the future. Uh, that's super inspiring for me. So, you know, Atmos is, a, is, for all of us, it's like a passion. You know, if I make money at it or not, I'm still going to be doing, doing it because, because sonically, sonically it's what, what I've always wanted. So, so yeah. yeah. <laughs> that that puts it on. Yeah. yeah. Is, it, is the it the monkeys? monkeys? I think it's, we get it. Yeah. Oh, we got you got it. a pinwheel. Techno dad. As soon as, right. as, soon as puppies. Stop. Techno dad. We happen. All right. I'm going to give the mic to techno dad. We are going to restart audio. Movers. Restart audio movers. Okay. We restarting There's going to be. Oh, yeah. Show the. Uh, uh, other cameras a little bit so they can see the room. Oh yeah, this room is pretty, pretty decked out. It's a little ridiculous. <laughs> it's a little bit ridiculous. Apple Vision Pro who? Yeah, exactly. <laughs> yeah, the, my whole vision for this room is if, okay, if you saw... If anybody, anybody tuned into the whole mixing night, night which, which was, was February? Oh, in January or February, I can't remember. Uh, I really showed you how I utilize the projectors when I cut vocals to put the the artist in their own space. I project uh, lyrics in a box in front of them, and then the rest of them uh, is going to be something like this, which it could be anything that they want. It could be still images or a video around them, and it just is meant to take them out of their head and let them open up and be as free as an artist as they can. Uh, and so that was one of my inspirations for the projection. But also while I mix, I do this. I surround myself with whatever I want to be inspired by, whatever the song might mean to me or whatever the mood of the day is. Uh, sometimes we put a camera outside so it feels like I'm sitting outside and in my backyard while I'm mixing. And I just project my backyard into uh, my uh, screen. And it's, it's, it changes your mood and the way that you work uh, and you know the way that you mentally approach your work really makes a big difference, and that was the big inspiration between uh, for me for building this room. And it's we got we're rocking 914. Um, we're wired for 916 and Sony 360, but we haven't installed Sony 360, um, and we're only 914 because I don't really think you need the six speaker. Uh, we have them, but we why put them up? Uh, but I'm full, I'm all Atoms, so you know, on my nines around me are all Atom A8Hs. The uh, heights are all A7Vs, uh, and the, actually I'm rocking a Cali sub for the LFE, because, um, you know, most speaker companies don't build a, a cost-effective sub, and the LFE is so lightly used. Take a seat, Techno Dad, it's you, baby. Oh, what? Yeah, you get to tell them... Uh, <coughs> Describe your ADM. Well, oh, actually, we probably can't talk. Yeah, we'll have to turn off the microphones while we're playing the ADM. But you guys got to watch this. And look at, so you'll see on, on our screen, we'll be able to move the, the render around. And you'll see in real time. And Whoa. if you're listening in headphones, you'll hear it by neural. Yeah. They're going to be hearing it now. Hit play. Yeah. All right, here we go. This is uh, Cradles of me and my boy Joe. We formed together. Uh, spatial group, and here, here we go. Yeah, 
else do we got? Mark, do you want to play your ADM? Yeah. Sure. What's happening? What's happening? Uh, okay. okay. We got my mic. On central on. mic in up? Yeah, we can turn that one up. Yeah. Copy that. Yeah, so uh, that was, uh, you like it? Like oh that, my, that was dude, yeah. so sick. So um, we started off, uh, just in the center, and then just kind of just to yeah, just, just to make it out. just to make it trippy, yeah. you know. And then move the bells. This was me and my buddy Joe. We kind of worked together to to get that one done, and it, it was uh, it was awesome. He found the song, which is oddly Where's enough, Mark's ADM. Um, what do you call it? It was uh, royalty free. So uh, nice. <laughs> that, that, yeah, that, that also helps. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Killer. What's that? Yeah. What uh, what'd you use? For most of the panning, was that drawn in Logic, or yeah, using a music yeah, panner? Or? Yeah, Logic. Yeah, Logic. Yeah, sweet. Yeah, yeah. I think he he did, he, he said there was a lot of automation. He had to like copy, you know, so that it, so they all kind of just uh, go out together, yeah. kind of thing. Yeah, right. Yeah, that's awesome. Yeah, I love how they spoke. That's cool. Boom. If if you guys if you guys can up the volume of the ADM, I hear that would be good. Yeah, right, let's up that volume. 10 dB. Let's yeah, fucking we're go. Getting, we're getting instructions here. All right. There's, uh, there's a couple people on the Pure Mix chat that have gotten your DVD already. The Techno oh, really? Dad calibration DVD. Yay. Maybe you should talk about that really quick. Yeah. yeah. Um, okay. Um, yeah. All right. Uh, this is the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit um, made by myself and, and, and. Oh, the mic. Uh, so this is the Spatial Audio Calibration Toolkit made by myself uh, and my buddy, Mr. Joe Intel. Um, it's been out for about a year and a half now, and we've uh, we Sick. we developed over uh, to to make this. We developed over 200 Dolby Atmos tracks, 160 of which made the Blu-ray disc, and this is 13 sections of um, Dolby Atmos tracks to help you dial in your home theater. Uh, you can use a calibrated mic, a dB meter, and, you know, do, like, level matching, you know, a timing test because time alignment is huge in a large speaker array. And this will help you calibrate uh, from a 5.1.2 to a 9.1.6 Atmos configuration. And, yeah, I think this is awesome. The torture test section is the section everybody hates because no matter how good you think your system is, you're going to play this and you'll be like, damn it, Technodad, I think I got a hole right there. I got a hole right there, and I think I need to buy some more speakers. So sorry if you have to buy more speakers, but um, check this out, spatialcd.com. And um, we're going to talk about it a little later. Um, we actually just came out with a new product uh, for studios. And uh, Ken. QC Pro? Ken, yeah, the QC Pro. Oh, we uh, heard that earlier. That's nuts. 
That's yeah. a good tool. Yeah, we'll talk about that later. A little teaser for you guys, right. but we'll definitely check that out. All right, so Mark, why don't you take the hot seat? Sure. All right. Set them up. What are they hearing? Hi. Okay, so this is a track um, last summer or the summer before uh, that I mixed for an artist named Spencer Sutherland. He's uh, out in Los Angeles, and he teamed up with the one and only Megan Trainer and uh, did this single, which is crazy and awesome, and I was lucky enough to be asked to do the Atmos mix for it. The stereo mix was done by Rob Kanelski, who um, has done Billie Eilish, her work, and one of uh, my favorite mixes is a, a song called Muddy Waters from LP. That was also Rob. So when I knew he was mixing the stereo, I was even more excited because I love his work. So this is Chicken Little from Spencer Sutherland and Megan Trainer. Here we go. Spencer Sutherland. Pretty cool. All right. Thanks. I love, yeah. I love the diagonals and stuff. That was good. Yeah, yeah, the, yeah, the motion was really great on that, but really the uh, the feel of the song in the room is just spectacular. You just feel like you're in it. Uh, I wanted to spill to Atmos Essentials. Um, we put together an entire, I'm not sure if it's up on the description yet. If it's not, it's going to be any moment. Um, but... Uh, 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 so we put together an Atmos Icebreakers, and it's like a one sheet of basically everything that you need to know um, about getting started in Atmos, what the format is. Uh, let me find it so I can pull it up and chat about it. Mm -hmm. I'm not finding anything tonight. Uh, so um, let's see. And if I could find it, I could talk about it. <laughs> The icebreaker thing that you did? Uh, yeah. Where is the Atmos icebreakers? So basically, like, the icebreakers are things like uh, Atmos has got to be in 48K. Um, you're married to certain uh, 
rules. Can one of you guys text me the uh, Atmos Icebreakers? Thank you. I think what's interesting is, uh, is and then that, that's one of the bad parts about logic per se is that you know some of my projects were 44 one and i went to a music studio and tried to just put their my project in their logic and they're like oh well, we got to trans change it from 44 one to 48 and when you do that in logic everybody sounds like a chipmunk yeah, yeah. sometimes it doesn't it's, work so sweet in no logic. it doesn't weird. it doesn't so that that's a very big thing so if you're working in a lot of projects that are 44 one and need to go to a studio you need to do that 48k <laughs> Um, to do that at home, you know, so you're not wasting precious right. time and money okay, in the studio good, yeah. messing around with that. But I think in Pro Tools it's a lot easier, or like it doesn't happen as much, or does it? Uh, it doesn't happen know. as much, no. Okay. Um, but that just happened to me on a project in Logic, like just the other day. You'd think they'd solve it in 2024, but I mean, we're not there <laughs> yet. Hey. And the and the problem with that is if you're mixing in Logic and you've never heard these stems before, and that's all that you're importing. You don't know that the song you're about to mix was sped up. You just, that's what you're hearing. And all of a sudden you deliver a sped up mix to your client. And they're like, who are you smoking crack right now? <laughs> um, so, uh, <clears throat> so um, here we go. So the Atmos Icebreakers, they're up on your, your description. Uh, I'm just going to go through a few of them because I think these are the essentials. And once you hear a few of them, you're going to go get it. How many speakers do I need? None. You don't need any. You can, uh, yep. So how many speakers do I need? None. You don't need any speakers. You need a pair of headphones, and you don't even need the Apple spatial headphones. Uh, just a regular pair of headphones is going to give you binaural, uh, just like you should be listening tonight. And uh, you can learn the Atmos format and mix in Atmos completely wearing headphones only. And then uh, as you decide, okay, I want to level up, then it's time to get speakers. If you think you can make money with it or you have clients that are demanding it, after you have learned it, then go get your speakers. Uh, is Dolby only for movies and film? No. Uh, Dolby is, so Atmos and Spatial Audio, Apple Spatial Audio, are basically the same thing. Apple puts their own tiny little spin on it, but it's basically repurposed Atmos. Uh, Apple is currently the only music streaming service that streams uh, in full 714 to speakers. Netflix will as well. Um, everybody else is binaural. Uh, let's see. So what DAW do you need? There's a bunch of different DAWs. Um, anyway, I'm looking through this whole list. There's a glossary of terms. Dolby Atmos, Binaural, Dolby Renderer, Re-Render, ADM, Object, Bed, Metadata, Apple Spatial Audio, LFE, um, Pad to Frame Boundary. Oh, yeah, there's some stuff you really need to know in here. Uh, and we've got, um, bum, bum, bum. we've got current popular speaker configurations. So this is going to tell you... Um, what all the numbers mean, uh, how they change each time. Uh, so go get this. It's in the description of the video you are watching right now. We're going to do the roundtable in about five minutes. Uh, we got a question from the chat roll from Anthony Murano. Hey, Anthony Murano, talking about immersive mixers. Uh, when mixing an Atmos, do you find that you are using less EQ or processing each element differently? Great question, Anthony. By the way, Anthony Murano, uh, I think he started as an immersive live mixer for Cirque du Soleil, and he's toured with like Willow and uh, Kraftwerk and some heavies, and doing surround uh, sound for live is incredible. He's a groundbreaker. Um, okay, so Anthony says, when mixing Atmos, do you find that you're using less EQ or process each element differently? Yes, because when I move to Atmos from stereo, I'm leaving all plugins on my stereo mix bus engaged. I'm making sure all that noise shit is turned off. Um, but all plugins on, and I just export each stem one at a time through the whole mix bus. I know the compression can slightly change the levels a little bit, but you know that's what the Atmos mix is for. You, know, you got to compare them and make sure that they do the same things. But keeping all plugins on imparts vibe from the stereo mix into the Atmos mix. If you try to do the stereo mix from scratch, and then you try and do an Atmos mix from scratch, unless you're Techno Dad. <laughs> uh, it's gonna be, it's gonna be a real challenge to get the energy and the feel that you captured in the stereo to match in the Atmos. It's not impossible. It's just giving yourself a lot of headaches. So there's a lot of these gems uh, in the Atmos one sheet. Uh, if if you're a teacher and you got students, man, give this out to your students. It is going to dispel so many things that you just don't understand yet. And uh, we got another question coming in. Uh, there's um, a question here. Hit uh, us. Uh, what is, 
what's the general minimum cost of entry, assuming you already have a basic recording machine to move up to Atmos? Uh, virtually free. Um, all you need is the software, right, Mark? Mm -hmm. You just, you just need the software and a pair of headphones. Um, and I think the renderer comes with Pro Tools now, if I'm not mistaken. Yeah. So you need, uh, you need a DAW and a renderer, which mostly are... And headphones. Yeah. yeah. And you're in. Um, so there's a very low cost of entry to start working in Atmos. Um, I would say only the real pros that are making money at it need to invest in the speakers. Uh, and like we said earlier, if you're mixing only in headphones and need ma mastering, then call us and we'll master it for you. Um, we're getting reports that it's, uh, can we have the guys just check to make sure that StreamYard um, on theirs, I can't check theirs within stereo, because we're seeing a lot of comments saying it sounds like it's mono. Ooh, we should be in binaural. Yeah, like it should binaural be. sounds like mono. Is what uh, well, I think the um, the talking should. What about the ADMs? Were the ADMs in mono? Yeah, they say oh. it sounded like mono. Yikes. See, Atmos is changing every day. And the latest <laughs> yeah. change is mono. It's changing. <laughs> Atmos mono. <laughs> it's the culmination of all immersive into one tiny little ball. It's like a black hole of immersive. Black hole of confusion. That's <laughs> uh, what it is. I'm playing the ADM, and you guys tell me. I've been doing my time. Yeah. Yeah. Saying yes to everything ADM, ADM, and, uh, ADM and everything is mono. Uh, control room, they're telling us the ADM is mono. The audio mover link I had was not in mono. So it's just the... Uh, just the binaural? Just the binaural, yeah. Okay. Well, let's see let's if we see. can check that. that uh, I'll take another question from uh, Mikolo, Mikola Konovalov. Oh, uh, hey, Ken, would it be possible to get a download link to previously bought compression course? Uh, maybe. Uh, yes. Don't ask me during the show. Uh, hey, Tom, how do you get around uh, turning up too much... Uh, uh, hey, Tom asks, hey, Ken, how do you get around turning up too much of the rear information and objects when working binaurally? Uh, well, I don't know because I have a speaker array. Um, so I make sure that my speakers tell me what's going on. Um, I would say, how do, you, how do you make sure you don't turn it up too loud in the back? I think um, you can, you can kind of watch somewhat of the meters, but you know they're not the most informative meters either. I think uh, if you're going in binaural, you're going to feel it enough if it's back there. And then most importantly, probably would be if you have a friend with a room or you have a room in town, book an hour, go listen on speakers, and then make your tweaks. That was um, pretty much what talked me into getting speakers, actually, because I started on headphones, like what you're saying, and uh, brought my ADMs into another room, listened to it. Thought maybe it was just that room. Went to another room, and boom! It was it was apparent that I needed to get speakers, yeah. you know, because of that reason. So. Well, I also find balancing your rear LR. So in headphones, your side LR and your front LR should translate exactly the same in your headphones. So when you are spreading things out, you can envision your sides as oh. your music mix bus. This is the Mike Miller method. Uh, Mike Miller puts most of his music on the sides, puts most of his drums in the front, and kind of picks things to surround you with, and puts the vocals in the in the wides. Uh, and uh, and he's a brilliant mixer, and his mixes are incredible. So um, he's definitely doing something right. So I think the back LR is, to my perception in the headphones, it's another mix bus, but it's a little darker than the side in the front uh, LR. So maybe that helps. Um, it's just it's just going to feel a little bit behind you, which is going to be a little bit darker because your ears don't pick up the same. Yeah, yeah we're not we're not designed, designed to hear behind us, exactly. or or above us for that matter. So well, no, clearly, I mean, no, no, definitely not. Uh, let's see. Uh, who, uh, is it time for Rock AM? Let's bring up Rock AM. Uh, where is Rock AM? Rock AM. Do you want to? All right, we're going to get Rock AM uh, up here for a binaural roundtable in a few minutes. Do you want to? Um, so, do you want to quickly check the ADM to make sure it's in stereo? Sure. All right. So, here we go. go. Load, Load up our, our new product, product Studio, Studio QC, QC Pro, Pro ADM, ADM, and we, and we will, will see, see right away. away. Yeah. We will. Yeah. Uh, where? Techno Dad's ADMs, and then do they not? I think it's. Oh, it's in the mixing night one. 
four three bottom bottom. There it is, Studio QC Pro. This is the brand new product. Go to Studio QC Pro. All right, let us know. Center. Front right. If you're not, I'm sorry about that. It should be the same uh, stream, yeah. Yeah, it should be the same stream. Uh, so yeah, this is Studio QC Pro. We we've, we've been running this at our place now. It's a pretty cool. It's just like a speaker checker. It's going to tell you if you haven't been in your room for a week or so, or if things might have gotten bumped around, um, if all of your speakers sound and are translating the way that they were supposed to. Uh, what do we got to do to bring Rock on? Okay. And uh, Studio QC Pro, just like um, Spatial Toolkit, was made by me and Joe, Joe and Tell, and he's like, look, that's all it took to see and double check. And that's it. That's what, that's why we uh, created the product. Five minutes, one ADM file, and, and you just you just, you just listen. listen. And, if and if something's wrong with the speaker, speaker or something, something weird, weird is happening, happening over there, there go, go figure it out. out. And then you know, because you know, if you were you're, you're like Rock, and you got Rihanna, Rihanna coming into the, the studio, and you haven't, haven't been, been in the studio, studio for two weeks. weeks boom, boom, five minutes to check, check it. Done. done. Go to studio pro dot com and check it out. You know what? If we're doing giveaway, can we give five of those away tonight? We're not giving anything away tonight. We're not giving anything. No, that's. On top, on top of all of the, the broadcast, broadcast crap we did. Okay. Time. All right. All right. All right. Well, hey, you know what? Okay. Uh, I don't know how to do a giveaway. <laughs> <laughs> no, we were going to do some giveaways, but trust me, the prep for tonight's show was intense. All right. And the dad lab is way too loud. Oh. Bypass yeah, and go with Ken's mic. Okay. Uh, okay. King, King Phantom asks, uh, what, hey, Ken, what is the most important thing to know about Atmos when using it? I think as a hired mixer that the atmos needs to hit you the same way that the stereo does feel and emotionally wise i'm not talking about you know it needs to sound like the stereo mix i'm saying when you put on those headphones and you switch between the atmos mix and the stereo it needs to sound like the same song to you it needs to sound like that hd hi-fi version of exactly the same song and that's a little bit limiting as a pro mixer uh but that's usually unless the artist wants something different in which case, give the artist exactly what they want and have fun. Uh, uh, Jersey Boy Beats asks, hey, Ken, any specific speaker recommendations and size? Well, I endorse Adam Audio, and I'm uh, Adam916 in both of my uh, Atmos rooms here. Uh, so I love them. But um, let's see, what do you use in your room? I have uh, Focal um, Shape 65s uh, for all of the surrounds and the heights. And then my left and right, however, are key threes, and I was spoiled by those, and I didn't want to give them up. So I have a mismatch thing going on. I've done that. Um, it works. You don't have to have everything matched. Yeah. Really yeah, and then I just have a turn off balancing it all out. So a Demon 16 that's kind of helping with that, too. So I don't feel it when I go across speakers, which is awesome. Nice. But, yeah, lucky, too, because I didn't want to replace those. He's, <laughs> he's got a fucking trin off my god this dude throws down uh, if, if anybody is priced out of trin off uh, uh i mean amazing tech but uh, oh, the, the smaller companies are getting better and better we're giving away an ik multimedia uh, uh arc studio a uh, hardware speaker correction box tonight i'm running arc studio on both my dutch and dutch eight c's and my lr mains of my atoms and it really dialed in both sets of speakers super well. I was very impressed. And I know they're probably working on an Atmos version of the same thing. So they're giving the trend off people a budget run for their money. Mm -hmm. I got a plus one that the first time I heard that thing, I was like, the, the you sure? Studio? Yeah, yeah. I was like, I know. really? Yeah, <laughs> we like... put it up against, you know, the other brand of correction. Yeah. And we were like, huh, well, it beat that. So, yeah, you know. It's really good. We, we still, like... For Atmos, we use Sonarworks to calibrate our Atmos uh, right now. Um, and then we enter the values into our Dadman software, and then it is married into the software and baked in, and then we don't have to worry about it. Um, but I think the initial analysis for Atmos is done with Sonarworks, uh, which has been a godsend. Um, I, the first iteration of uh, the studio here, which was Blanket Fort, 
who only survived <laughs> thanks to Sonar this. Works. I heard about this. <laughs> it was no joke, though. Oh, man. We threw down in Blanket yeah. Fort. I mixed some hits in Blanket Fort. That was a throwdown studio. Then we built Studio B, and we moved everything into Studio B Atmos while we were building A, and then we built this monstrosity of a cool, uh, immersive spot. How are we looking? We have some roster in the room. Okay. So, uh, just keep, keep I'm going to let my guys uh, into the fray here. <laughs> Jump in and do it. Go. And the email will link to the back channel email account. Nice. Woo. Can I do Q and A with Hypno Dad? Uh, yeah. <laughs> you absolutely can. Is your mic still going? You, uh, you have your loud thing. Too loud. Oh, gotcha. All right. Yeah. Well, I don't know how we'll do this, but um, you should tell us how you got into this. How I got into, into the whole Atmos thing. Uh, well, I started as a consumer, and uh. Basically, I started with a 5.1.2 setup in my living room. Nice. And um, I started with the YouTube channel in 2016. I started covering Atmos in 2017 and just trying to f hear something cool. And, like, there was a couple of cool things, and then I upgraded to 5.1.4, even more cool things. And then I was like, I wonder if I can set up 714 somewhere. And in the studio where I shoot my YouTube videos, I was able to do it on really small speakers that I put on mic stands so I can just move it around when I, you know, get it out of the way and stuff. Right. And um, I dropped a bunch of money on a 16-channel interface, and, you know, I had the monthly Pro Tools, and then that slowly... I didn't do anything with it. <laughs> I didn't do anything with it. And then my boy, Mr. Joe Intel, was like, hey, can you, um, can you put some pink noise in the high channels? I'm like, I can do that in my sleep. Yeah. So I started doing that, and I sent him the files, and he was doing remote calibrations for these home theaters. And he's like, dude, this saved me like two, three hours. Let's put something together. And that's when we came up with this guy. Nice. And um, then I started finding, I mean, I've been producing music since 2005, right? right. My stuff, other stuff. I've, I, got, I put out an EP in 2016. I got some, I, oh, the crowning achievement. I got, uh, for those of you in Australia or New Zealand, there's a TV show called Home and Away, which supposedly is Yo. like the young and the restless here. <laughs> he knows it. Oh, no, he's got rock. <laughs> oh, he's got I rock. He's like, oh, uh, Home and Away. <laughs> so I, I got original music on that TV show, and I only found out because I got a royalty check, because otherwise, because I haven't seen it. Yeah. Right? Nice. right? So um, been mixing for a long time, and Atmos is just awesome. Yeah. I'm a, I, I produce and I DJ EDM, so I started doing that stuff, which, you know, lends itself to Atmos, so that's kind of... Awesome. That's it. Yeah, nice. That's it. Rock's in the house. Oh, yo, yo. Hey, what's going on? Going this guy. On, man. How you doing? Good to see you guys. Are we all set up for binaural? Uh, are either of you are joining the round, round table? round table? We can join the round table. Are we about to just use the mic? Yeah. Jonathan, why don't you join the round table and Nolan, you stay in the control room. Nolan, actually, table. yo, open up that. We got to open up this. We need the yep. Ambio session yeah, that, he's, session that he has been luckily enough to bless us with. Wait a second. Uh, Joe had to just order the R2 two days ago. Good job, man. Good job, Joe. For 300 bucks, R Studio with the mic included, pretty sweet deal for simple calibration. But we need <laughs> we need custom target imports from REW. Six points isn't enough. <laughs> All right. All right, guys. The well, mic no. is live, oh, no. no. Yo, yo. All right. Yo, so, yeah. uh, and we are... We can pan that wouldn't now. snap too close to that. That's oh. probably loud as fuck. Is that loud? <laughs> <laughs> My bad. I'm, I'm a dick. Sorry. Uh, do we need to change this to... <laughs> loud is good, man. I like loud. <laughs> Loud's good. Isn't that what you said about the uh, the LFE? I don't like LFE. No. <laughs> oh, wait. This is supposed to go to four. Oh, Techno Dad remembers the numbers. I... It, Two, three, four, and five. That's it. Nice. <laughs> uh, so welcome, Rock AM. Uh, why don't you tell us a little bit about yourself? And uh, yeah. thank you for joining the broadcast. It is such now, an honor. Of course. Of course, man. I mean, number one, such a pleasure to be on here. It was such a legendary mix and engineer. Ken Lewis, you know, we met, you know, AES, uh, this past AES. And, like, I just bonded with this dude so much because... College Dropout was kind of, for me, that was one of my breakout kind of like projects that listening to it, it was a good life experience. At the time, I was a kid, 
But you know, I, I, my mom didn't allow me to like get involved with hip hop because of the politics, and she heard College Dropout on like a, a road trip, and she was like, "This is an amazing album," and I, I was like, "It is." <laughs> I'm like, "This is hip hop." So that kind of transitioned into just me loving just you know that style of music and, and Kanye and the production and everything that was done around that time and learning about Ken, um, Ken's role in that. That was just like I was like, man, I have to be like your lifelong friend now. <laughs> that album literally changed my life, man. So, you know, it's just me. Yeah. I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, it's pretty. Obvious. <laughs> it's pretty obvious, but um. Yeah, man, I'm Brock AM. I am a audio engineer, artist, producer, you know, creative. I just love doing cool ass shit. Um, professionally, I'm I'm really, you know, doing a really good kind of like creative run in the immersive space. Um, from mixing anywhere from like your catalog stuff from Universal, from like Frank Sinatra, James Brown, Mary J. Blige, you know, all of those legendary Motown artists. All the way to your new artists like Rihanna, Ice Spice, um, and and many many more. Her, you name it. Um, and yeah, you know, I kind of fell into this space by mistake. <laughs> Wasn't intentional, like most things are. Um, you know, I got a call about you know Atmos in like 2020, and it was during the pandemic. And you know this you know this person called me up and he's like, you know any engineers that know anything about Atmos? And I'm like, uh, no, but let me go check this stuff out. My engineer hat came on and I did a rabbit hole down in the Atmos. And I'm like, yo, this seems like a revolution of music. So I was intrigued just by the concept and I just dove into it and I never got out the holes. <laughs> Here I am. That's like a quick story, just the gist of it. But yeah. <laughs> I think we all. <laughs> about it and then because I was talking about it with him so much on camera it was basically a thing of like I need to go do some Atlas mixes so I know what I'm talking about on these live streams right? <laughs> yeah. so, yeah. it, might, it might help it might yeah. help so I started doing that and then that eventually you know like we were saying just doing more and more of it led to you know what we're doing so yeah. nice and how did you discover Atmos techno dad uh, the started off with the gravity diamond lux Blu-ray edition. I paid eighty dollars for that fucking Blu-ray, right? <laughs> so is this this is all consumer. Love it, love it. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. And that was the best expression of Atmos because they're in space, so they're like spinning around, and then like the mission control is is here on the right surround, then top right, then top left, then on my side again, and then. So was that like really the first time you heard home theater like the movies? Yeah, yeah, and and. Anything, and so I, I went through, like, in my first, like, in, in 2017, all, I did all these Blu-ray uh, reviews on their Atmos and just to find. So I would, like, rent or buy, like, whatever I could. Right. And, like, garbage-ass movies, like uh, Jupiter Ascending, garbage movie. Fantastic <laughs> Atmos, <Yeah>. right? <laughs> you know? Um, and it's one of those things where it's just, like, um, I wanted that, that immersive experience. And I noticed, like, space movies... Yes. You know, some some movies like Sicario, eh, great film, all dialogue. Really? Right? Like, why is it in Atmos? Like, I'm not really, you know, it didn't, it didn't make sense. It didn't make sense. And, like, um, <laughs> you know, it's, it's so, okay. yeah, so kind of, that's how, I, that's how I found it. And then, yeah. So, Jonathan, you came to work with me in 2021? Yeah. And one of the reasons you wanted to work with me, because I was very interested in Atmos, and so were you. So I'll give Jonathan a little setup. Jonathan's been with me about three years. He is the Atmos mastering engineer here. So anything that I mix in Atmos, I deliver mastered in Atmos by Jonathan uh, before my client hears it, which is a super luxury. And, you know, a lot of people, 
uh, you know, uh, probably a lot of people watching ask yourselves like, well, how can I get opportunities? How can I make my way in the music business? And what Jonathan Garcia did was he saw a niche for Atmos Mastering that he was like, hey, Ken doesn't know how to do that. I could really become a pro and then I could do Ken's work and everybody else's work. And Jonathan immersed himself, no pun intended, nice. Nice. into Atmos and really learned all of this shit from the ground up and became an expert. And now you just got your first gold record for mastering uh, Rema. Yeah. And congratulations. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Thank you. So, yeah, you know, I'm a big preacher of you got to make your own way in this world. And that's exactly what he's done. He found a niche and he dove into it and filled it. Tell us more. Man, it's been wonderful three years <laughs> um you know i got into dolby atmos because like uh in at the end of college you know 2021 is kind of like when uh it got announced and I, I was like i'm like wow this is gonna be the biggest thing to hit like everyone and i like went to all like my old like my old people like my mentors at the time and like all these people i looked up to that were like in the field and they just told me i'm pretty stupid <laughs> like they're like yo this isn't gonna work out man like you're really gonna waste like a lot of your money and time, like, and I'm just like crazy like you, a fox with a gold record now. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> mm-hmm. and I'm just like, you know, I'm glad I didn't listen to them because like, uh, it, I'm just like, you guys are crazy. This is like from mono to stereo, you know, like it's happening it's, right now, especially it's a like big jump with like yeah. streaming, especially oh, yeah. like from just for music, twelve channels over like it's the, the first streaming format in history for multi. It's the yeah, first yeah. time listeners can actually experience streaming. Uh, the way we can hear it in our control rooms, which yeah. is great. Ex- yeah, especially like the integration with uh, how spatial audio is like even pushing that border, right. um, and just like building upon that, uh, it's just gonna keep going. Um, you know, the Apple Vision Pros. Rock, you're you have a super unique kind of insider, high level perspective of what Atmos is and where it's going. Do you have yeah, any insights yeah. into where the format is headed? Is it yeah, gonna yeah. be more adopted? You tell us. What are your thoughts? I mean, I mean, there's a lot, there's a lot, there's a lot of rumors out there, as we all know. Um, I think just if you, you know, anyone in, in the audio space, specifically people who've been there for the transitional period of like mono going into stereo, they kind of see now that Atmos is something that's sticking, right? And we see it through marketing, we see it through the money that's being put in. Um, and the first few years were pretty, you know, it was risky, right? It was initially a corporate push and the corporate push was so that it can get to the creative space, right? So you kind of have to throw things in people's faces by force to get people to kind of like say, okay, let me be, let me accept this. So that corporate push kind of gave labels a, a shot at it, which labels have the biggest catalogs in the world. And then you know, that kind of stemmed out to, okay, let's make some incentive plans. Let's get the artists involved. So for me, when I saw that there was a gray area between consumers and users and artists really understanding what Atmos was, I thought to myself, okay, there's like an educational like curve here, but let's not, let's not make it educational. Let's make it creative, right? So I started to look at a lot of the creative aspects of Atmos because I'm thinking of just the future, you know what I mean? And if you really think about it, a new format and a new way to listen equals a new way to create. And that that gives artists a new way to kind of like give their music a new sound and to give it a new experience. And I think that's what was really intriguing for me. Um, Atmos has opened the most doors for me ever in life. And I've been in music professionally for a little bit of time now. Um, in and out of the label system. I mean, as a kid, I interned over at Republic Records, you know what I'm saying? Young. And, um, you know, it, it, it opened doors because, you know, right now, music and technology is like in parallel. So like, and we've never been in parallel. Like it's always been a war <laughs> with music and, tech, you know, um, now that we have AI, which AI we've always had, let's get this right. Chat GBT just made a commercial, but everything is kind of aligning into this new futuristic, like, paradigm and we have all of these new products that are coming out like the the apple vision pro is just like a test like people don't even know that's like a beta version they only testing to see what's what's going to happen and how the market responds to it but when all of these products come out 
we're going to be able to apply them as pro audio people and as consumers and have a new way to enjoy and consume music. And I think that's what's important. I think we've been in stereo for how long, Ken? What, 50, 60 years, I think? Is... Andre. <laughs> I mean, I've been alive, so <laughs> a long time. You know what I'm saying? So right now, it's just like we need that transition. We need that new paradigm. We need a new way to 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 open up the door. And and most importantly, we need new people. You know what I'm saying? This this brought brought more people in, and we have different perspectives. One thing about me is like when I'm in the studio, I really love having like different people from either musical or non-musical backgrounds to give perspective because that's like that raw kind of like you know all right this is the consumer brain this is that type of brain you know we can't do it all alone and collectively with atmos it's just like we're, we're in a world where there's no rules and we're what's cool about it too is like we're kind of day-to-day -day figuring things out just like the atmos mastering thing like that wasn't a thing and you notice that right so now it's like I'm 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 actually because I do my own mastering, but I'm like, I wonder, you know, it, it would be probably cool to have like somebody designated for this, and it could probably bring a lot more out in mixes, you know. This guy, but like, look at how new this is, and now you're, it's gonna get out there that you're mastering, and you're gonna be busy as hell. <laughs> yeah, that's I mean, the goal. I think um, <laughs> kind of like to what you were saying, you know, since this is also new for the consumer, you know, and the creator. Like this would probably be the time to actually try to get some sort of standardization as yeah. far as at least <laughs> the translation, right? We were oh, talking okay. about it yesterday, right. right? Yes. If we were to take the calibration method here in the studio, not the mm -hmm. not the diagram, because the di Dolby diagrams contradict each other, yeah. right? 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 On Monday it's this way. On Monday afternoon it's go that way, right? You know, so it's very confusing. So if we were to use the same calibration method in the studio and then in the home theater space. And that way, you know, we can have like what, what um, Dr. Floyd tool calls the circle of confusion. We, we would like tighten that up a little bit. Yeah. So, yeah. Home, home theaters would translate much closer to stereo, right. which are to, 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 to your, yeah, right. we're not, we're not, we're not talking about headphones, right? That's, that's right. another headache altogether. That's another conversation. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, we're noticing with uh, my my colleague's app, um, you know, in, in the uh, home theater space, they they have a curve in the AVR that will, you know, tune your system. So they call it the Harmon target curve. And it was Dr. Floyd tool. He went, and this is a long time ago in Harmon, um, he had the JBL M2 speaker. He measured that speaker in a bunch of different rooms. So this curve is the average of those frequency responses in those rooms. Well, unless you have a JBL M2 speaker, it doesn't yeah, mean there's, anything. There's another curve in this and, and uh, so, and land so, that yeah, exactly. everybody ignores as well. Exactly. So hey, hold that thought. Hold that thought. So, so with uh, my colleague's app, we are now able to create a custom target curve specifically for that room, taking into consideration the distance between the front stage and the main listening position. In your guys' case, that's the mixed position. Yeah. And and the capability of the speakers, right? Right. Taking all those things into account, it creates a custom target curve. So imagine now if now the same thing in the studio space, Dolby has a curve, right? right? That's absolute doo-doo, isn't it? it? Is. Yes. Right? Nobody well, that's not saying that. Oh, okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. I'm saying that. I'm saying Thank you. My, my opinions are my own. Okay. No, anybody at Dolby watching, no, it's, it's not bad. Wait, hold on. Oh. Just Really quick, just not, I'm not even trying to correct you. My perspective on the curves, I think it, the curves are designed to beat. I mean, we're supposed to beat the curve. I mean, that's that's the point. I think. Um, I think anything that's produced in any of those programs, we're technically supposed to beat, and that's just and that's our that's our thing as engineers. We're we're always striving for that. So, that's a good one to hear. Yeah. yeah. So so if we were to um, now get a custom target curve for this room. And I got a custom car target curve in my home theater. Now, at the main listening positions of both separate spaces, we're actually going to hear a similar experience. We're going to have a similar experience. So if we can get that kind of thing happening and, and tighten up 
Because mm-hmm. there's so many it's variables. Like the, right. the other thing that uh, is a huge advantage for the end listener right now is the audio movers uh, spatial audio stream. Hey, okay. right. so that's what we're doing right now. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. Do, and do they know? Do they so, know? Is this so you, this is this is spatial. So you as a mixer can broadcast a stream to your phone, pick it up in headphones, and listen binaurally. Or you can can you broadcast your ADM to uh, your speakers via yeah yeah like no you can yeah you and can play this right back like audio, the new audio movers app is really tight um, and for those of the watchers that are still on the YouTube regular um, yeah. shout to all the people that are in this their studios hearing us in their studios yeah yeah that's really awesome have you done that before yeah. guys girls no never never, never. make it history yeah this is the great. audio movers thing right it's that's crucial. You know, when I, audio movers was always cool to me. I mean, they always had the best tech when it came to, you know, uh, streaming sessions. But when they did it in 714, that instantly was just like, oh, shit. Now now we're getting closer to everyone, right? right. right. Now, now, now we now can be master classes. Now we can, you know, there's tons of opportunity in that. So, again, these things are going to start piling up as far as opportunity and people just, you know, well, someone's interested, get on board. It's the best time right now. Just like technology in general, AI, all of that stuff. Best time right now. The next two years, if you're not in there, out. So people are living or listening in their 714 rooms right now to this microphone that spins around, right? Correct. Yes. So, so if you were to like swing something around, uh-huh. oh, man, we, so, so, hey, let's, 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 let me move over here and keep talking. What's going on? Let's kind of do, do like a round <laughs> robin. <laughs> hi, hi, hi. hi. What's up, what's up, what's up? Yeah, it's woo, time woo, for Ken woo, to do his ASMR stream. It's ASMR yeah, stream. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now I'm above you. <laughs> yeah, and right. now like I'm too, below you. Right. Like below. Also, it'll right. do height yeah. as well. Yeah. Yeah, it yeah. should be. Uh, I, don't know, I don't know how it does it. but I don't know if uh, the Marcus video played earlier. Was that the video that was explaining this mic? No. no, no. There was no audio coming out of that video, apparently. Yeah. Oh, the yeah. Nolan had a video that um, we don't know where the audio went, but he did a whole binaural thing. We'll probably post it on the YouTube channel. It says even the room verb is round. <laughs> <laughs> he said somebody else said that tickles. Ha ha ha. It ASMR stream. So yeah. Rock, how do you? How did you get around Ambisonic. knowing the uh, the streaming translation before audio movers? Was well, uh, what with DSPs with like Apple Music and stuff like that, or? Like yeah, just uh, well, I guess who cares? Before now, we have audio movers. What what is your process for referencing your mixes when you're finished yeah. up? Um, okay, <laughs> so that, that was the wild wild west at one point, uh, as you may know. <laughs> so early on, you know, I got activated with this really early, and before, just like we were trying to figure things out, we were really figuring things out, right? And you had, you know, Dolby Atmos has its encoding, which is what we use in the studio. That's the renderer that we use, right? And we mix it down. So, like, when we're mixing, I've learned to mix in the room first. I, I've had the opportunity to, the luxury of being able to mix in one of the best rooms in the world, you know? So, that was to my advantage. But the next thing was, you know, you can mix it in the room and get it sounding the way you think it should sound. But then when you get into headphones or, or you listen to it binaurally, that can be a complete disaster. And that all could stem from your binaural settings. That could stem from placement. A lot of things change binaurally, it, even tonality-wise. Like, there's so much that goes into it. Um, so we, you know, where I was at, I was doing it at Republic Studios. Republic had just opened this new studio, and they took over Red Bull Studios in Manhattan, right in the Soho area. And um, they had this beautiful PMC room. I mean, this is the first room I actually listened to Atmos in. It's complete love. I'm so fortunate for that. And that's the room I learned to mix in. And we would have to mix in the room, then mix in headphones, balance out the headphone uh, mix and the uh, mix in the room to make sure they both translate properly and learn how to do that. Like, I used to love putting things in the sides and, like, in the wides. But, like, if you put too much in the sides and the wides, you blast it in, in, in the headphones. Um, even with the LFE, you know, using the LFE, you may think like, oh, this sounds great in a the room. Then you get into headphones, it's a big explosion in your head. So, <laughs> so learning to balance all of those things out. And then, um, you know, then you got to think about DSP. So DSP is like your Apple Music, your Tidal, and Amazon. Specifically with Apple Music, Apple Music has 
Dolby Atmos, but they have what they call spatial audio, which is their own encoding, which is cool because it's good for their 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 products, right? Like AirPod Pros, where they have the head tracking stuff, um, and now with Apple Vision Pro, blah blah blah. So now you got to go into listening to what it would sound like in their DSP and in Tidal. And I, I'll never forget it, man. I was talking to Christine from Dolby, and I was telling her about the the adventure of mixing one record and how many steps you have to go through for quality control. And she told me one thing, and she was just like, don't mix for anything. Don't mix for Apple. Don't mix for Tidal. Don't mix for Dolby. Just mix the record and get it sounding the way you want. Don't chase anything. Once I learned that concept of not chasing anything, then I started to really kind of pivot and really start to kind of like develop my own way of kind of like knowing what was what. And that and at that point, I was barely checking much. I would check my headphones. I would check it in a room and I'll be good. I wouldn't have to check the DSPs because I knew what the, what the translation would be. And then as time progressed, their algorithms changed. So, you know, you had all, Apple was they raised their volumes because we were complaining about the volume um, thing. And it just got better and better. And it's going to continue to continuously get better as long as we continue to keep mixing, you know what I'm saying, and pumping out more records. It's all, you know, trial and error. So, yeah. I, I think we could probably do an entire show on just calibrating and setting up your room. <laughs> but one of the most <laughs> crucially important things is time aligning your speakers and really just spending a ton of time in your space listening to it. What we did was... We picked each stereo pair and we put the same piece of music out, the stereo pairs, and we made sure that each stereo pair was balanced to my ears perfectly. If you move it a half a millisecond, you can hear the image shift. Mm -hmm. So we were in the room and, uh, and playing the same stereo in pairs out of each pair of speakers and then making sure that that translated at the same volume and, you know, and impact to the headphones. So you'll do yourself a great favor in translation between speakers and headphones if you just spend a lot of time early on setting up your room correctly and calibrating yeah, and yeah, listening yeah. between the two. And the QC Pro will help you with that. And the, the room, well, the, actually, the actually kit, the, this, yeah. this kit, what you just talked about, is a section on this disc, speaker pairs, there right? And this is, this is very important, what, exactly what you were saying. Nice. And we took it one step further. Not only is it um, each pair, but we also do the adjacent speakers. So front left, you'll do it with front oh, with center, and then ah. front height left, and then surround yeah, left. That's tough. Oh, or or yeah, if you that's tough. right, yeah, yeah. right, and then and then you got to like balance all those and get the time alignment right for all of those. Then you move to surround left, which is going to be mid height left, uh, front wide left, surround back left, and that. And once you get all of that, then that was actually one of our viewers told me to do this, and I spent like five days going through all these combinations. <laughs> And this is the <laughs> section that people love the most, right? Yeah, that, that sounds like a, yeah, that would help a lot. Yeah, yeah, no. But setting up your room, crucially important. And, do, I mean, do we were using, like, laser pointers and, yeah. you know, laser measuring tools to make sure that the distance between this speaker and that speaker, so mixed uh, position little was... Labs, uh, yeah, Little Labs uh, uh, IBP, is that what it yeah. is? Little Labs, yeah. Um, yeah. Little Labs makes a plug-in that does very Ames. minute timing and phase correction and you can put that on your stereo pairs and listen in your room and put the little labs in and you can adjust by you know tenths of milliseconds and phase oh, nice, nice. and figure out what the best timing is and then enter that into dadman or whatever your baked in software is am i explaining mm -hmm. that correctly yes I do, I do understand some. You, you got it you got some <laughs> stuff yeah so. that's sick hey listen uh, i'm setting up my room in maybe about two months might call you to come by. So that like that world tuning and I'm not in that world at all. I don't I don't I don't I don't understand it and I really don't try to <laughs> because Alan Garcia and Nolan Monogold uh, specialty yeah. around here. So nice. um and Nolan down in the control room, uh he's shout actually Nolan. what up uh, Nolan yeah, shout outs to Nolan. Uh, <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh <laughs> Nolan uh is has really dove in headfirst and embraced Atmos recording. And he's set up his entire, he has a, his own studio with a big live room and a church. It's freaking awesome. And, uh, and he's set up um, an Atmos microphone array to capture 
uh, mm -hmm. bands and instrumentation. Tell me about that. Yeah, oh, it's so freaking cool. So like all yeah. of us are just really kind of picking our passion of a direction here and going with it and carving mm -hmm. our own ways. It's pretty cool. Yeah. So shout outs to Nolan. Whoop, whoop. Yeah. yeah. I'm actually okay. working on a project too like that where I'm, you know, I'm recording at a church. This church has like a 360, 19,000 pipe organ. Program. Oh, it's crazy. And then, you know, Steps, shout out to Steps microphones. They, uh, they ended up giving us some microphones and I'm like, how the hell do I supposed to do this? And I got some good information from Dolby. My theory on it was like, Hey, if I'm doing this for Atmos, I want to kind of like set the microphones up the way I think the speakers are going to be set up, like for a 916. And I was actually right. And, you know, Dolby has a lot of good documentation on just like the best practices for recording. You know what I'm saying? For Atmos. Um, so, I mean, Atmos has just opened the door on so many different opportunities, you know, and it, there's also some, some other things that's happening with that in the tech space that's really like big. But just being able to just think that way now. And I think that like, that's what's important. We got to keep pushing that needle forward. You know, like what creatively are we going to continue to do to make this like, you know, impactful. So yeah. We, uh, me and Jonathan got to hear, um, we both went to a Mike Miller Atmos uh, thing at Sweetwater for two days and it was just like, shout, shout, out, out. shout outs to Mike Miller. He's a brilliant mixer. Um, and, uh, but what's that? I forget why I was telling about Mike. Um, what was that? Was that? recording? No. Oh, yeah. Uh, Mike Miller and the Hazel Rigs do Atmos recording, and it is breathtaking. Uh, we couldn't even believe the playback on it. And it was just like unmixed raw playback from Tri the yeah. recording capture. And we were in the control room just, it's magic. So Yeah, yeah. when you record... When you record for Atmos, it's a whole different level. <laughs> it's like, I've heard some recordings. My guy, Justin Gray. I don't know if you guys know Justin. Gray. Oh, yeah. Justin Gray. Yo, that dude is a wizard, man. Shout out to Justin Gray. He's doing some spectacular things in the creative space of Atmos. He showed me some stuff during them, and it was just, like, mind-blowing. Like, I was just in awe, you know? So. Yeah. he's. Uh, we met him at the AES two years ago, or I did. Uh, brilliant, immersive mixer, mastering mm -hmm. engineer. He, he did the Snoop Dogg record. Mm -hmm. Dog, yeah, dog is bro, his story, his story and his story, his story is like the story that I always tell him, like, man, you need to tell the story on as much as you can. Because people don't understand when you're doing catalog how like the 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 you know just how deep how much detail and how you have to be so freaking just like careful what you're doing. I mean, like and you know, for me, it's crazy because I wasn't alive for a lot of this stuff. Like, I wasn't even, you know what I'm saying? So, like, I'm like, yo, how, like, who am I to fucking mix this shit? You know what I'm saying? But like, <laughs> what's crazy <laughs> is it opens the door to, you get to see what they were doing at those times. You do your due diligence. It forces you to educate yourself on how records were done. And I think that just musically just, it makes you more powerful. You know what I mean? And to Justin, like, you know, we didn't, he didn't have like a hi-hat or I think it was a snare or something like that. And he went and like literally found a similar snare, EQ'd it, compressed it, and triggered point, triggered it to be part of that record. Like it, it was just nuts. And the snare was completely from somewhere else. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? So the post-production, yeah. it, it's just wild. It's wild. At most catalog, people don't realize how insane it is. I'm mixing a, a, a catalog album right now. It, there are no mixed stems. Yeah, these guys oh have been here. Uh, and, and it was done by a super famous mixer who's one of the best in the world. And I've got to match his stereo mixes from scratch. Yeah. Uh, yeah. With no automation or recall data or anything, just by ear. Nothing. And then make it as identical from start to finish. And this is a super dynamic album. So every section I need to check and dissect and make sure just on the stereo. Then the stereo's locked in, stem it out, move to Atmos. The process, the records you've done, incredible. I, the, Ken, yeah. have you ever played, when you get the multi-tracks, you ever play them like in Pro Tools? Dude, <laughs> it is the best music education. I mean, those players and the, oh. The recording is yeah. incredible too. Bro, yeah, yeah. It, it's like, it's one of my favorite things about being both a mixer and a producer is because 
As yes. a mixer, I get songs from all over the world from great producers, and I get to dissect mm -hmm. their productions, and I get to see what's happening, mm -hmm. and then I get to incorporate those ideas into my own toolkits. And that's yeah. how everybody really learns, but that's, that's how I've that's leveled just, up my production. I, I was in the kitchen talking to your wife, and you came, you came in, and you're like, whoa, I just learned some <laughs> shit. Uh, you know? like that, that, That's awesome. It's always a learning process. Thing. We're always going to keep learning, man. I think, like, this this game, like, the in audio engineer production, like, that game, you get better, like, the older you get. Because you the more information you retain, it's like you just become unstoppable. That's why, like... Got guys like George Massenberg and like all of these OGs, like they 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 don't stop because they just get smarter, and I think their ears even get better because it's like training. You literally train your ears for life. You really I'm talking six years of training. You no one can tell these guys anything. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? And, yeah, that, that's really the hard thing. Like, I can hear the way you breathe, boy. <laughs> like, like they can they can hear you. They can hear your digestive system. Bloodstream sounds too loud. <laughs> well, that, you know, that's the hard thing starting out is like you don't know what you don't know starting out, and and you're second guessing every move that you make. And guys like me and Rock and Mark are just you know we pull up the faders and the song tells us what to do because yes. we've done so many other songs and so much other work. And it's like muscle memory and athletic training for your brain and your ears and your instincts, and you just over time get more comfortable and better at it and if you've seen me sprint mix that's just instinct it's all instinct. it's so true man when i when i first really got into the professional space like audio wise i was like very um you know i had like the imposter syndrome slash like it felt like i wasn't good enough because i didn't learn the way everyone else did like i didn't have the i wasn't fortunate enough to go to like a school like a berkeley or i didn't have none of that technical background i literally just watched was in the studios or I would watch YouTube videos and literally learn how to mix from that. Like Young Guru taught me how to mix on SSL, like literally. And I met him for the first time and I told him that. I'm like, yo, bro, you literally taught me how I how to mix. Like literally, you taught me how to use a compressor. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? But like, yeah. like, you know, I don't speak that same language where it's like, oh, 20 hertz. And like, for me, it's literally all feel. Like I literally just dial in and when the music speaks to me and that's how I retain the music as well. And I thought everyone thought that, like, everyone else was, like, very technical. But then I started hanging out with guys like Michael Brower. And, Ken, I know you're the same. Where it's like, they're like, nah, man, this is all feel. Like, we turn the knobs and we feel it. And then, and then we get technical. And that's just production from a production creative background. It's like, yo, dog, we're not we're not trying to dive deep into that right now. Like, we want to get the vibe. We want to get velocity. We want to we wanna feel it. Like, when you add that aspect, that's when the music is beautiful. And then Atmos, I mean, come on, man. Atmos is all about harmonics. It's all about feel. It's all about this this right here, like that that third eye. You know what I'm saying? Like, that's what we need to capture and continuously keep growing on. Yeah. I can, yeah I, I'm, I, I, I'm like drinking espresso, so I'm chatty right now. Chatty, hey, dude. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. I, I, you know what I would love to see is a little bit more risk-taking in the Atmos mixes. Cause you know, you know what I say, Rock. Bring on the circus, right? I want it to be. Well, <laughs> that's that's going to start, like Rock said, with the artist. Yeah, it's got to yeah. be the artist discovers the format, envisions what they can do and create with it, and how they can touch their listeners, mm -hmm. and how they can elicit emotions through this space. And there's going to be artists that create solely for Atmos, yeah. and yeah. you know. That's one of the exciting things about, especially with Logic. I feel like Logic is, is, I think in my opinion, the easiest one to just open up and go with. Probably. But that's you know, correct. Right. And it's, I think it's amazing that for artists. Was it like 200 bucks? Yeah, yeah 200, 200 bucks, right? And it's like, I mean, it's literally two switches, I think, that you, you know, you throw the, the plug-in on the master fader and switch. Oh, no, you don't even have to throw it. You just go to mix and you click Dolby Atmos and then you do yeah, the drop down for Atmos. So that's and, like. And that, you can mix in and mix on your AirPods on Bluetooth. Yeah. So now artists have it right in their, you know, in their toolkit, right. in the software that most of them are in. So they're in Logic. Right. It's right. the easiest one to get going with it. So how long before enough people are just like, oh, what's this button? Oh, let me move that over. Oh, what would happen if I composed a different harmony to go over here? And now they start getting inspired by the space rather mm -hmm. than us trying to stuff stereo into this format and blow it out. Right. That's what I'm excited for. Is I, I think, you know, from that uh, mixed immersive event, you know, 
I noticed a, a lot of the mixers, the pro mixers, are trying to you know create like a soundscape, where for for me it's like I want to make sure every speaking if every <laughs> every speaker is spoken for, hmm. right? And I got this um, the the K five uh, remix stems because that's I don't I'm not pro like you guys I I, I gotta you know I gotta get I gotta see my this uh, is a cool stem dealer right. you know yeah. a stems <laughs> dealer. Um, I got a vocal <laughs> over here. I got some stems for you, but you know, um, uh, so the vocal came stereo dry, uh, with, uh, another one was a delay uh, of the vocal and another one was a reverb. So I did the stereo dry in the front left and right. I did the, um, the delay in the surround left and right and the reverb in the surround back. So the vocal goes through the room. Right. And you really get that on a speaker system. You really get that that sensation. And like my viewers love that one too, because I like packed a lot in the LF. Nice. So you know, but yeah, you know. By the it, way, so it all depends, you know. Yeah. By the way, for anybody tuning in, uh, this binaural roundtable, we're using a, a Sennheiser Ambio microphone, which has four capsules on it, so it's pointing in all different directions, and it's capturing uh, 360 of the room. Yeah. And hopefully, if you have headphones on, you can localize each so, one as we talk. So my colleague told us to spin it around 180 because uh, right, right. because of the the view. It's uh, like Chana's on the left, but we hear him on the right. Yeah, yeah. So so we did that. So <laughs> yeah, there is a front to this mic too. Apparently, <laughs> right? How many times have we seen the picture of, of an artist singing into the back of a microphone? And, and yeah, yeah. I have one question though. I've been like saying this for some time when we was doing the tech stuff. But this whole thing with this like digital plaque is just blowing my mind right now. Like, <laughs> Ooh, this is so great. Like, who 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 created that? <laughs> um, uh, shout outs to my wife Lori Lewis. Uh, she Real. so I, if you don't know my resume, people, I have 114 gold records so far. I'm probably gonna get another 10 or so this year. And the plaques get really, really expensive. And I'm tired of oh, yeah. paying through the nose for plaques. And I needed to get like 60 or 70 of them. So my wife is designing these amazing digital versions for my, uh, and we just project them onto TVs in the back. And Can I buy one? I just ordered, I just ordered, by the way, I got plaques for like the, the stuff that I did, immersive mixing. Like I got plaques I got from Jewel Box. Shout out to what? Jewel Box. Shout out to Jewel Box. Uh, you you got over that's 100 man. billion streams, bro? You kidding me? I mean, yeah, yeah. That's cat. I mean, I mean, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's not even. That's not it's, even. It's, all it's all it's all it's all it's all that, that, that's that's just something. something. A lot of people were like, "Who the hell is this guy with 100 billion streams?" Right? But you got to understand the business and the education. Catalog is 80 percent of the industry. 80 percent. So we're talking like anything. Catalog is technically anything 18 months or older. But like all of those records from James Brown, Frank Sinatra, like they're still getting big sync placements, sync opportunities. Like they're making the money and they're the core of the music industry. In fact, like that money goes, I mean, I'm not gonna, not even gonna say that. Anyway, <laughs> you know, so again, being able to crack open those files and as a producer, it's just like you're salivating over like what you see and you just, you just get to explore like different generations of like music. And man, it all accumulates. Like I look at the streams day to day and like people are still streaming, like, you know, Frank Sinatra's, you know, uh, Wicked. Uh, I mean, um, uh, I put the word, I got the world on a string, all the greatest hits or James Brown, like say it loud, I'm black and I'm proud. Like they're streaming this stuff crazy, <laughs> crazy. So when it's a hundred billion streams, yeah, it's pretty fucking accurate. You could look at <laughs> That's just what it is. Hey, no, I'm, I'm just saying, fuck it, fuck yeah, amazing, fuck yeah, Again, man. We need to fit. We need to create an alliance, right? We need to get all of the the big dogs, like get everybody in a room, and we need to start this petition where we can make some money off of those streams. <laughs> you know, you I just want a penny. I'm, I will I show up yeah, for right. anything. <laughs> that, that, that penny. I just want a penny. <laughs> yeah, can you imagine? That would be nice. Imagine, imagine. man, that's crazy. But yeah. yeah. No, so yeah, the the process of mixing catalog is so yeah. Yeah. insane. I, yeah. That's I, I saw impressive. what you were doing yesterday, and immediately, and just like I told you, Rock, the other day, you guys really need to get paid more, like mm -hmm. for real. Like this, uh, is, yeah, this, do, this, this is a lot of work, and then for the short right. amount of time, because you got to get it in. I'm not going to say when, but like, right. you know, it's it's. 
crazy the amount of work you're doing. Yeah, uh, the the <laughs> paychecks don't match the work right now f- for me anyway. Um, but at least in catalog work because sure. it is so time intensive and so ear yeah, intensive. Yeah. And but that's I, like forever. And <laughs> I believe I'm setting myself up for the future. Like the work that I do now is going to ensure that I get catalog work for the rest of my career as long as I want it. Um, yeah, hopefully. Yeah. And, and, and it's going to train me on best practices on how to do catalog yes. work, which is uh, yeah, it yeah. really helps to have been an engineer for over 30 years. Right. Because, yeah. like, I just mixed the Donna Summer stuff, and I mixed all the Donna Summer singles, and, and there were no mixed stems, and the multi-track was not arranged. It was a 20-minute, each song was like 20 minutes performance, and the producer would chop sections of the performance out and mix to two, uh, to two tracks. So I had to go yeah. through a 20-minute <laughs> multi-track and find the pieces that matched the original master uh, and then mix those to the original master and then assemble them into a Pro Tools session correct for drift, if anybody knows oh, what oh, analog yeah, tape indeed. drift is, you because your oh, Atmos master has to be perfectly aligned, aligned to your yeah. stereo master. Let's not even get into that. <laughs> oh, no, it's like blue. Right. Like I mean, it's brown. Like, Jeez, yeah. But but, yeah, yeah. Rock, but rock is right. Like the the three percent of the music industry is new music. Three percent, mm-hmm. and what did you say? Eighty percent is catalog. So yep, yep. Um, yeah, I'm gonna go where the money is. Yeah, yeah man. man. So you know, I I'm just for me, I'm just going where like when you discovered mastering and Atmos was a thing. I'm following history and not just following what the niches could be, but like vinyl, I got into vinyl cutting. I cut two vinyl records recently. Uh, Soy Q and Akon, yeah. I, I got I got a studio that I do it in, in in New York, in Brooklyn. He has the Neumann lathe. I learned the entire thing. And you know, that's an art. I mean, I, I give it up to just the guys that's been doing it and that are teaching me. But like the vinyl is at an all time high and no one even, I think 60 or 70% of people that buy vinyl don't even open it. <laughs> it's just like, like, it's crazy. I you know what I'm saying? Final and no uh, player. Mm-hmm. Well, like, um, yeah, what yeah. is it? Uh, Best Buy got rid of all their Blu-rays and DVDs, but they're selling vinyl. So mm-hmm. there you go. There you go. Yeah. And it, and it, this year, I think every year it goes. Uh oh, we're losing rock. We're getting choppy. So it's frozen. That's another thing too. Get into the space. The stats. You know what I'm saying? You learn about. All the business, all the stats. Oh my! Hello, I'm here. Yeah, you're, you're back. You're back. You're back. But um, yeah, I was just saying, you you just you get so involved in just like statistics and just the business and what's going on, and it, it just it helps you elevate and kind of know the next door to open. You know what I'm saying? Right now, it's like all about like AI and technology and tech. And like, what are we doing in those spaces? It's a little scary, but it's like I kind of look at it like, what are we doing to increase like human connection with AI? Like how can we increase creativity? How can we use it as a tool? Like money is a tool. So AI is the same concept. It's like getting to that end game closer, you know? Yeah, I agree. We've been using AI creatively here. And, uh, Dude, chat GPT, you know, we used it like three, four times to do the stream. No, I've, I've created music with AI. <laughs> really? And, Which one? Synth, have you seen uh, Synth G- GTP? No, no. Sona? Sona. Yeah, we've done some work in Sona that's been kind of interesting. And oh, yeah. You know, yeah. All the rights. It's a brave new world. Yeah. It's a lot of cool shit out there. there. There's this company I'm working with called Tuni, Tuni AI, and they have like this, uh, this thing where you throw in like a record, it could be a one wave file, and it literally recreates that record for you and changes the, the genre, it changes everything, like, and it makes it totally a different song. And it's fucking cool. It's Tuni AI. Check it out. It's it's, it's crazy. It's crazy. It's but, on the to do list. I yeah, man. Because you know we're we're in a space of like remixes too. Like remixes is about like a big thing, a bit bigger than what it's ever been. So everybody's exploring this this space and the AI place because of the demand. You know what I'm saying? If that can get pumped out, like you know. Speaking oh, of remixes. I feel like uh, Technodad um, might be perfect for the remix space because 
you don't really worry about the stereo and the remix right. I think you could probably have a lot more freedom of expression. Well, um, you know at that panel you were on, Brock, um God, we'll oh, go we'll, Eric, Eric Schilling? Is that his name? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, cuz he he said that um, with Atmos the you know, if it's the Atmos mix of the song, it's got to stay true to the, you know, stereo and true to the artist. He's like, "But if it's a remix, you know, then then it's all, <coughs> all bets are off. you know, all bets are off. Techno Dad is a go. Maybe I could, you know, <laughs> you know, do like a Techno Dad Atmos remix for all the EDM artists. Because yeah, I, I mean, find your niche. Oh well, actually, yesterday that song that uh, we did, you had me do the Sprint mix. Mm -hmm. Oh man, I put I put the the keyboards up top. Mm -hmm. I did the back background vocals in the surround back. It actually. It actually was pretty nice, man. You heard it? Yeah. Yeah, yeah you were here. That was, that was actually kind of cool. Killing the sprint mix. Yeah, yeah. I did pretty good. I did yeah. pretty good. That Mama would have been proud. Yeah. <laughs> That's cool, man. That's fun stuff. I know, like, I know artists that, like, that are into Atmos that have done things, like mainstream artists, too. They're like, yo, put my vocals anywhere but in the front. You know what I'm saying? Like, shit that I like. Like, I, like cool ass shit like that. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's shift things a little bit and make people think a little bit more. I think having your vocals not in the front, it, it just, it tricks your brain. Like, <laughs> like, it literally tricks your mind. And now you're, like, having a, this whole different, like, euphoric perspective of this song. And these back, these vocals are dominant in the rear of the room, you know? Uh, I did a trick on my very first Atmos mix. I had no idea what I was doing. So I took the vocal, and it's about um, the song called Panic Room by Camel Fat. Uh, this EDM artist, and there's this part where she says, you know, it's going to come for you, come for you. So I had on a bed layer the vocal spin around to where when she says come for you, it's over your right shoulder, and then the other come for you is over your left shoulder. So it's kind of give that scary kind of vibe. It was it was awesome. I loved, I loved it. My, my viewers were like, holy crap, this is cool. You know, obviously, like, that wouldn't fly for a lot of people, but, you know, I'm excited to see, like, what creative people... I heard his. Have you heard his his stuff? Obscene Steelers. Obscene Steelers? Oh, Dude, that shit was awesome. Yeah, me and my boss have a sync group together called Obscene Steelers, and they make oh, uh, music for film, TV, video games, stuff like that. And oh, we're kind of like the music guys, and we collaborate with other creators. Yeah. And, then that, his, his albums, I was like, he's like, you know, I'm kind of, you know, doing all this catalog stuff. I'm like, okay, well, what would you make if you could just, and he's like, I got something. I'm like, okay. <laughs> <That's> <laughs> yeah. I'm, release I'm it. <clears throat> you know? Sick, man. Sick. Topic. Well, listen, Topic. I, I want to I wanna come and hang out with Ken. I couldn't make it this time around, but, you know, I really want to have that time to really kick it with you just because, you know, I want. I want to know. I want to like hang out with your creative brain. Like switch to. <laughs> the feeling is very mutual. Whenever you can get your ass out to Ohio and yeah, uh, yeah. it's gonna be very soon. Days, very I'm soon. Looking forward to it, bro. I'm seriously <laughs> looking forward to it. Mark, did you have uh, something you wanted to bring up? Yeah. Well, um, the I think the biggest thing that's been surprising for me is um, it just has to do with Apple Music, with it being turned on by default. Like if oh, right. if your yeah. song has an Atmos mix. Genius. They just play it over the speakers. They're hearing Atmos. <laughs> you know, right? It's the Atmos mix. It's not the stereo. And I don't think that artists are aware of that yet. You know? I don't think most people are aware of that. Yeah, yeah. a and lot of people in the music, consumer space yeah. that they have no idea. Well, well I, I need to say something about that. Apple continuously does genius, diabolical shit. Like they're literally next level. I think the default with Atmos was a marketing move. And because, you know, everyone needs to get used to this. No one really likes it because they don't know it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Specifically from a binaural perspective, that's like hit or miss. So I think Apple's way of getting the market and getting people involved was, hey, let's just make a default and not even let them know. Listen. <laughs> or unknowingly getting used to it, right? And then when they hear it, they're like, when they hear stereo, they're like, wait a second, something's wrong. It's, just, it's like evil genius. <laughs> 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 Honestly, um, like if the Atmos mixes are like, if they slap, it's gonna sound good. Yeah. You know, it's gonna sound really good on the phone. Sound really phone. good. Yeah. yeah, I feel like a, a well done Atmos mix is like twenty percent better in headphones and a thousand percent better in speakers. Yeah, oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. but a definite level up. It's like 
it's like hearing the HD version of this song that you're just like uh, in the room you're in the middle of now. You know, the, yeah. the headphones and stereo just don't really put you in the middle of it the way that the Atmos binaural does. Mm. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And that's a pretty, and the spatial audio with uh, the Apple head tracking, uh, head head tracking. and things mm. like oh. that. And just the way uh, Apple seems to locate a little bit better. Yeah, I, I got I got something to say about the head tracking. Whatever you do, don't put your phone in your back pocket because all right. of a sudden, <laughs> all of a sudden, I was like underwater. I'm like, what what the heck happened? <laughs> Why is what what happens when you put your phone in your back? Pocket? I I don't know. I put on this song. I hit play. I, I was like, oh, uh, you know, I put my phone in my back pocket, and all of a sudden, it felt like I I don't know, dude. Everything just whoop. Like like went That's backwards cool. or something That's or crazy. upside down and I was just like what's going on and I'm like oh is that head tracking on? <laughs> me, so the, the head tracking is from the from like the headphones. I, I like it because like when I'm in the gym and I'm like you know I'm doing push ups like it kind of changes depending on where you are. Like if you levitate, it's, it's great. If you're down low, like I went to tie my shoe and it was like it, it's fucking cool as hell. Or I'm bench pressing. So it, it's an adaptive like experience, like, and that's what's cool because like our attention spans are like this now. So it's like people aren't really, you know, they're not. Everyone's like, all right, done, done. So now everything needs to be like a circus or roller coaster ride. You know what I'm saying? And you got to be able to have your choice of the experiences. Head tracking, fixed, nothing. You know what I'm saying? We need options. So that that's all like part of like that's all part of the. experience. My favorite uh, head tracking is when I'm just out and about in the world and I'm walking through, you know, wherever, and I have head tracking on, and it's just the coolest experience. Mm -hmm. I just, you know, I feel like I'm in a space just out at a mall or walking in a park or wherever. It, uh, that's my favorite time to use head tracking. When I'm just I even love when the vocals get stuck, like, <laughs> in one place. Like, it's just <laughs> the right side. Like, I, I actually like that shit. <laughs> do, do you make it a game? You're like, okay, how do I get it back? How do I get it back? Do yeah, I need to like, like take Fox viewing positions? You know, like, like in Married with Children. But it's just, it's just cool, man. It's, it's just really, a di it's different. It's a different experience. So that's very cool. Um, so we're getting close. We've been at this over an hour. This is amazing. Um, do we have any other things that we want to touch on before I get back to the meat and potatoes at the end of the show? Because uh, we're almost at two hours, but we're going to run a little bit long tonight. For we're going to run long. long. All right. I love that. running long. Yeah. I'd love to ask Let's go. you guys a question. What's actually. up? All right. So there's all of you guys. Aw. Yeah. yeah. Thank yeah. you. Nice. <laughs> as well. Yeah. Nice. <laughs> um, so there's a lot of talk about you know should atmos be front loaded should it be you know even across the room should is the head in the center of the room or you know basically just different approaches to it and i'd love to hear everybody's answer to that question how you approach whether or not you worry about am i too front loaded am i in the center of the room is it different every song how do you guys like to go about it you want to tackle that rock uh, um say say that what time I was reading the text? Sorry. Like I'll, the, let me, I'll tackle part. it. So the, w the way that I tend to approach spreading the energy around, and that's kind of the way I look at it, because I think if you front load too much, you can't get as much volume out of your mm -hmm. overall fold down. Um, so, you know, we tend to use a bit of the Mike Miller method, which is put a lot of the stuff that would normally go in stereo LR into the uh, sides. Uh, not so much that you're overloading it, but, you know, taking some weight off of the center and then moving things that feel interesting in the back, back there, and, you know, finding your own space. But a lot of times what I find is when I think I want to put something somewhere, it doesn't translate in the headphones or the speakers the way I want it to. Mm -hmm. And it eventually migrates back to LR. Mm -hmm. So never be afraid to put something back into LR if it's just not sounding right where mm -hmm. you're placing it. Um, and I think generally music mixers, I'll be interested in your opinion, Rock, avoid the center channel and are pretty light on LFE. And I think that's a pretty common, I, I think you could probably remove my center channel from the room and I wouldn't yeah. miss it. Don't do that. Um, yeah. Don't do that. <laughs> <laughs> so that's, that's my take on uh, approaching. Yeah. Um, Jonathan, how do you approach uh, Atmos, like um, spreading your energy around? I think a really... Uh, I think a really cool thing is like definitely seeing what the song needs because like if the song just like is like piano or like uh, guitar vocals 
you know, I, there's not usually a bunch of low end elements, but you still have to have like something holding the weight down. Um, I think definitely getting an even spread kind of like for me is like a really good experience because my initial goal is actually like um, to have the client one day he's gonna they're gonna sit in a room like they're gonna sit in the Atmos room and they're gonna pl press play and they're gonna be like holy shit you know this is my this is my song like this is yeah. my experience and uh, I want them to if they're if the room is like fucked up like oh the speaker's like out of whack or out of like I want the mix to still translate so like with ca ha carrying the same weight carrying the same energy and impact so um, that's kind of like what I've been trying to figure out in good translation um, because well, obviously the headphones because everybody's gonna listen to that. Mm -hmm. But I think just like the end, like goal, how they're really gonna get that like feeling, and obvi obviously like you know leaving it like minus eighteen and like right. you know following those kinds of rules and like really pushing that kind of boundary of like getting that goal. Okay. I I actually I hate the minus eighteen rule. I mean I understand. I get it. I get it. I get it. And I've tested it. And yeah, they're absolutely right. You cannot really go. I I try to push minus fourteen. I do it, and it's like, <laughs> okay. <laughs> but um, you know, as far as like approach on mixing, right? For me, it's as long as you have that stereo image, man. Like where you can go to that reference, you AB the reference from your stereo image, and that's dead on. The world is yours. You you have a blank canvas to just create. Because it's not so much like the engineering is like most of the time it's done already, right? We're we're really just producing and and arranging and enhancing, you know. And then obviously you come with the mastering skills. But I think like stereo image is good. My transients and everything, everything sounds accurate. We have everything punchy or however way we want it. And then you know now we can be musical. I love to be musical in the middle of the room. Music in the middle. I love my drums. Anything dominant, right in the LCR. I do use the center channel very strategically. I mean, I like to kind of like create a curve, like kind of like a, a bowl, half a bowl kind of thing with the vocals, specifically when it comes into the chorus. So like my choruses, I would push a little bit more into like a 916 setup, I'll push more into the wides and then I'll just tap that center channel just to like give it a little bit more presence, kind of like using it kind of like a compressor, you know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah yep, yep, yep. yep. Yeah. And, then, and then, you know, I would, Anything that's like, like a atmospheric, or like you know, strings, or, or like anything with emotion, I like to have behind me, right? And like, kind of like up a little bit. Um, and then I also like to put low end around the room, so my low end would spread from it'll be dominant in the LCR. Sometimes I'll put it directly in the middle, like in the sides and in the rear, because my focus is I like to make sure the room is full and well balanced. Um, and that works a lot of times when you don't have a lot of assets, specifically in hip hop, you don't really have too many assets, right? You have drums, sample, synth, things like that, opposed to like a pop record or whatever the case is where you got tremendous amount of things to play with to build that velocity in a room. Um, and then reverbs are fun too. I, I love trying like cool shit with reverbs. I even create my own reverbs. There's a, there's a plugin called True Midside by RGF Studios. I don't know if you guys know about it, but... What it does is if you put that on your vocal channel and just solo the side information, it sounds like reverb that you're pulling from that record. Obviously, you EQ it and mess around with it because we, a lot of the times we, I don't get the reverb separated, which I wish I did because you can do so much more. So I'll separate it myself and I'll take that reverb, duplicate the channel, and I'll put the reverb like in the rear corners or in the, the rear wides just to build that atmospheric feel. And it makes the vocals sound bigger too. So there's, yo, there's so many tricks, man. There's so many things that you can do. And every record, like, is different. <laughs> like, every mix is different, literally. Like, the albums, usually, when you get an album, like, the album is like, all right, we get through, like, the first three tracks, and, like, everything else is kind of like a piece of cake. But, like, every, like, Atmos project is, like, that. I've never had one that was the same yet. <laughs> so. Some kind of slightly different in their own so it's it's yeah, really yeah. the wild west out here which i think is what interests all of us yeah like being on the cutting edge of something new that's probably gonna i mean music is gonna stay immersive from here on out uh whether it's yeah, atmos yeah. it probably is gonna stay atmos 
Um, but other formats might come into the fray. Uh, but we're in the immersive age now, and I want to be a part of it. I think we all do. Yep. And so, come what may, we're in it. I got uh, one last thing. I was speaking with Techno Dad before the show, and I was kind of amazed by what you were telling me about the home theater market. Uh, I know with myself, with the Pyramid stuff, I'm, I'm talking to guys like Ken and, yeah. and Andrew and everybody, and you know we're, we're this closed group of people who are making the content, but we think most of our conversations are, we're the only ones listening to this on speakers. <laughs> what does it matter? You yeah, know? no, like, that's, that's, not, so many that's not true like that. at all. Yeah, that's not true. I want to hear about that. Um, Give me hope. <laughs> so, so going along with like what you guys would do uh, with mixing, I predominantly, I know they're gonna listen on speakers. So headphones are not even an option. I don't really, I don't care about headphones, right? Um, oh, did we just lose Rob? Oh, 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 oh there he's back. Um, what I care about is creating something cool, mm -hmm. right? Hey. I don't care about that negative 18, <laughs> you know, that LU, <laughs> that I do not, the next 10 because you're not, not releasing to streaming. My right. viewers right. are crazy. They got like four 18s up front, then they got one 18 <laughs> behind each chair. Like I these want to be your viewer. Right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah. Dude, some of these home theaters, man, are just ridiculous, yeah. right? And they spend all this money, all this time, all this energy, and like, they're like, man, you know, they, even I would, right? I was telling you guys, I was watching these Atmos movies. It's a two hour, two hour movie. Maybe there's two minutes of good Atmos. And I'm like, man, I just wasted two hours that, watching this, right? I noticed that you on know? Apple TV. I was firing up Apple TV in here because I can stream to speakers. And a lot of it is just dialogue. And I'm like, okay. Yeah. Or uh, in movies, More. it's, it's uh, the, I, music, the musical score. They'll put the musical score mm -hmm. up there. Right, and not a whole lot. So when I'm mixing a track, you know, if you know, I find you know some of my favorite because I, I you know, I'm I'm a house and techno DJ, mm. so I love that stuff. And like some of my favorite songs, I found like stems for. And so I was just like, okay, um, what I like to do is take one or two layers and just be really creative with those two layers. Then I'll use the other stuff, maybe the vocal, maybe the bass, whatever, to kind of lock things in in the front a little bit. Um, and then just go crazy. Our page is going boop, boop, boop. And I shit you not, I will wake up and, and I had a dream about the renderer and all the little tennis balls <laughs> in a certain like in a certain that pattern. And I'll be like, <laughs> I could totally do that. And that would sound awesome. Yep. And my viewers would go crazy over and it. You sleep like shit the rest of the night. Oh, dude, I'm like, I wake up at three. I'm like, I got to try this now. <laughs> I got to try this now. You know? Um, Dolby Atmos Panic. Yeah, so... Um, so, uh, like you were saying, um, and Kai, and you, Rock, you said it too, like, I want to be inside the music. I want to be in the center of the music, right? And you said it, like, two channels, like, you're an observer, whereas, like, in, with Admo, so I, like, visualize everything before. So if I listen to a track, I'll be like, oh, that layer, I could do this with, I could do that with this layer, and that's kind of, like, how I imagine it. And I know, I know the challenges of the speaker system, too, because I, if you notice, because was it you or... Or, um, no. Nolan that said do you always just hard pan things to speakers because in, in when you're in between like um, okay if we if we do front left and right and you know we have two ears facing that way we, we can do a phantom center easily right but yeah. if you were to um, like uh, if you're we're, we're talking about wides right mm -hmm. you guys have look you guys like to put stuff in wides if you have a five ear level speaker configuration and you put something in the wide chances are that person is going to hear it from the surround speaker huh right because if you think about it if i turn this way and i hear this and this to make this wide coming out right here mm -hmm. i'll hear that but if i'm here because i have two ears this you know going this way right if i only have now one ear and it's trying to image something it's going to just default to which speaker is closer right. to that ear well you know so <laughs> like there's all these things so like you know, it's in it's the, been interesting. I, in I the consumer say market, like, ha, is there any kind of stats on how many Atmo systems are sold every oh, year? Oh, dude, you know what? Here, I, there, <laughs> here's give us some hope for yeah, you know yeah. here's consumer a, adoption. I, Save us, Techno Dad. <laughs> 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 this guy, you guys, look. First of all, I don't know how I got here. Right? You guys, I don't know how. Your I'm only here. hope. <laughs> you guys are like like these like insane guys that do all this crazy stuff. You know, I'm just I'm just a guy. 
having a shit ton of fun with this new format because I, I just I want to make cool shit, right? And and my viewers, they are they are dying for it. You know, some spend twenty thousand, some spend two hundred thousand on their home theater system. Yeah, no. no give us some hope for so cheaper. so like you know I'm 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 out cheaper here hope. <laughs> cheaper than cheaper hope cheaper than not hope. for rich people. I I, I uh, actually we shot some content. Um, and if you want to get into an eleven channel, um, speaker array, you can do it for about under two thousand. In wow. the consumer market, the speakers aren't going to be fantastic. The receiver is right. going to have some limitations. Entry but, level. but I mean, entry level for right. for a speaker array, eleven channel speaker array right. with two subs. Not, it's not, it's not bad, you know. And then, and then in like home theater, we always talk about the journey. It's like, okay, well, you know, in a couple of years, maybe I'll upgrade the receiver <laughs> or upgrade, you know. And, and then you get, and then, and then it's like a game, you know. And like every two, two, three years, you're like, okay, now I'm at this level. You know, should I stay here? Should I go um, a little bit bigger? Can I, you know, ditch the TV and go with the projector? You know, kind is of this thing. something that the manufacturers are looking at and going, yeah, we we bet on this and the bet was oh, hundred percent. Right. Like you can get a Dolby Atmos receiver for like five hundred bucks, okay. right? Seven channels, so two high channels only. Uh, but the jump to four high channels, you're going to nine hundred to eleven hundred at that point. If you want one box to do eleven channels powered. You're talking three grand. What about seven one two? Seven one two. So that's a nine channel. So you're going to be in the eight hundred to eleven hundred. So if you were looking at the Pioneer LX five hundred five, which I had uh, for a while, um, that will process eleven. So here's the other thing: it'll well, process I eleven get channels. Too nerdy, but yeah, it'll you know. process eleven channels, but only power nine. Oh, okay. <laughs> so, so seven, if you yeah. if you wanted those other two channels, uh, a basic. Seventy or eighty dollar <laughs> Class D desktop amplifier, right? Little tiny thing. You just right. connect it up for the surround back or the rear heights. That's usually right. the the two that need power. And then you can run eleven channels for you know just with that. And then there's the so, you know. So the consumer budget options are not exactly fantastic. Yet. They're not. They're not budget. Hopefully they'll yeah. well, get cheaper. There's also. I mean, that's like audio file ish. Right. Right. And. Yeah, but they right. also, and I know you know this about this too, technical dad. Like, also like, just not the audiophile people, but people who just generally love good sound, right? And like those people are buying like Sonos systems, which are amazing. I mean, we we quality control at UMG on a Sonos system. You know what I mean? Like, and that's like with the Sonos, the Arc, the soundbar, the era, the era three hundreds, the the new one. So standalone. I actually worked with Giles Martin on some like engineering for the uh, Era 300. And when he came to New York, he flew to New York and he like flew, you know, he had a bunch of engineers at Republic and we were just playing our mixes on that one speaker. And he was like taking all of our notes and like we were, he had his whole dev team there. They had like fucking seven computers and like we were just making adjustments a lot. It was the sickest, like sickest stuff. And I'm like, again, because I know Atmos and like I'm I'm going into like R and D with like products, you know what I'm saying? Um, and that that one box alone is pretty sick. Like it's up firing, forward firing, inside. You know what I'm saying? And you're you're getting that that emulation and that information. So and bro, I, I'm pretty sure in the next year there's gonna be a tremendous amount of product coming out. That's just high end, you know. I was at a CES this year and. Uh... There were two demos for Dolby Atmos Flex Connect, right? Uh -huh. iSense did one and TCL did one. So, so they used the TV speakers and two other speakers. Uh, iSense had them behind, right? And they played the Amaze demo or no, the Leaf demo. And I heard the Leaf go behind me, right? Cool. And then, oh, and it does like a thirty-second calibration, right? Mm -hmm. The TV and both speakers. Okay. The TCL one was even trippier because the TV was up front. They had one speaker up by the TV and one behind me to the left. They played the Leaf demo, and the Leaf went all the way around me from the back. I was just like, okay, because I know there's no speaker there at all, yeah. right? Nowhere near it. It's up there, and the other one's up here. So that was cool, but the TV, do you have to buy for this? <laughs> like 10 grand. Oh, <laughs> Yeah, it's all coming. So, it's all niche so right it's, now. Yeah. And no, we wanted to hear, dude. Yeah. <laughs> I, look, look. The more, the more Apple is pushing this, the more Dolby pushes this. You know, it's going to trickle down at some point. 
I mean, think about, um, I know it's 2017 for you guys, but the home theater market, it's 2014. So it's already been around for 10 years, mm-hmm. right? Well, it's 2021 for us. 20, oh, as far as streaming. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Was it, is it 2021? Yeah. So this is just yeah. three years of just yeah. streaming music? Oh, shit. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Shit is brand new, man. <laughs> oh. So, yeah. This so, is literally the Wild West for us. You've been in it for 10 years. Yeah. Uh, yeah. So hopefully. Yeah, any mixed tips? Yeah. Me? <laughs> uh, man, you don't want you my mixed tips. Dude, <laughs> my mixed tips are making sound as trippy as fuck and don't care about it. You know what? You know what? Rock. You know what? I would love love to, to take one of the tracks that you're mixing and just, yeah. Fuck, yeah. just do one for you, bro. Just do one for you. And yeah. see how awesome you can make it, you know? Because I know, I know you, man. We hung out for quite some time, and I think you could, you, I think you make some hot shit, bro. Some hot I shit, you know what I'm saying? Shane and Shane Brush and uh, Grimmick Scott um, asked if we could all discuss the uses of center tunnel. I think we kind of covered it. Um, really I mean, people don't like to use it. Yeah, yeah, don't yeah we, well, we basically yeah. avoid the center channel mostly as yeah. mixers. Rock says he, he sneaks a little bit of uh, lead vocal into the center channel sometimes as an anchor, which makes sense if you've ever walked around an Atmos room and nothing is in the center channel. Uh, your mm-hmm. lead vocal shifts around the room and it doesn't stay in the center. And if your lead vocal is in the center channel, uh, then it can stay more anchored towards the, your center yep. focus of listening. Uh, which yep. really helps, but a lot of people's center channels just sound like shit. So uh, mm-hmm. yeah. that's kind of for the time being is why I tend to avoid it because yeah. my people just don't have the quality. Of it. So if you guys sneak it in there, are you still relying on Phantom Center for the most of the image, and then oh, yeah, yeah. getting yeah. a little piece in there for the yeah, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. You just gotta watch out for that comb filter. And that's I'll right. do that with uh, I'll do that with instruments as well. If I have something that is feeling a little bit too wide or a little bit too something, but I like what it's doing out there, then I'll sneak a little bit of that same signal into the center channel. And sometimes yeah, I'll yeah. even darken that signal in the center channel a little bit so I get the weight of that in front of me yeah, yeah. and the width of it beside me. And that really helps kind of uh, solidify it in your ear so it's not phasey and kind of makes mm-hmm. you you know, turn your head. Yeah. Ken, what, Ken, what are you doing? doing? What are you doing? With like your guitars, like you have a shit ton of guitar stems. Like, how are you using those? Uh, with the the catalog one that I'm mixing right now has a ton of guitar layers, and I'm finding uh, that uh, a lot of my main energy goes to the sides. Uh, yeah. And yeah. most of the important like solo type information or anchor type information, I usually still put in LR. Um, or somewhere okay. close to LR or LR height, so it folds down mm-hmm. to LR. Uh, and then I'll put, you know, the secondary frilly stuff in the back or in the height. <laughs> the fr- or... frilly stuff. Oh, yeah, so you, you do know, you do move the guitars around the room. Yeah, I try and paint a picture with everything that I have. And I just try and make sure that wherever I put something, it's it uh, doesn't take you away from the way the stereo made you feel, but just expands it. Um, gotcha. So, yeah. I'll tend to anchor the important things either inside or front LR, the frilly stuff in the back or the heights. Um, gotcha. And, uh, yeah. Yeah, I, I get, guitars are tricky. I, I, like, I, I get freaked out by them sometimes, like when there's a lot. <laughs> so I'm like, uh, I think I'm going to keep them all in one place. <laughs> yeah, the, the catalog album I'm mixing right now is the guitars on it are so wide. And it's super yeah. impressive. And what I'm noticing is uh, the original mixer panned a bunch of the layers hard left and a bunch of the layers hard right. Yes. And, yeah. And noth- none of the guitar is in the center. And he left all of the rest of the music for the center. And it just creates this huge image in stereo. And, uh, yeah, the things that you, like you were saying earlier, the things that you learn as, a, as an Atmos mixer dissecting other people's stereos is a really great way to learn stereo mm-hmm. mixing. Yeah, yeah. It's, it's like reverse engineering, man. It's the best. Like, it, it's amazing. It, again, like, I, I'm not, like, a huge in the stereo mixing space, right? But, like, doing Atmos, it, it literally is, like, bringing me down, like, step by step from, like, every single perspective. And I'm like, you can't learn this shit any, any better way than like this. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. yeah. You know, uh, about the center channel thing, um, we use it because our audience is home theater, yeah. right? So every who was it? Was it you saying that the? No, that was somebody else. 
Uh, anything on that TV screen? You watch John Wick? Yeah. Everything's yeah, it was you, right? Yeah, yeah. You were shot down. Every, everything's coming out of the center. The gunshots, right. anything that's happening on screen is coming out. And so, like, I, my recommendation, and like everybody else in the home theater space, you spend the most amount of money on your front stage. Mm-hmm. So when they have these arrays, yeah, right, um, their center channel, like you, you should have seen my center channel. God, if it was on its uh, standing up, it's like this tall, you know, four, six and a six and a half inch drivers, going a big ass horn, right, and yeah. huge and heavy. Um, so, um, we found a way to use it in music where we have a nice spread across, um, a little bit into the wides, left and right center. And, and it sounds awesome. I I played you yesterday. I played it for you yesterday. Yeah. And so, you know, if, if other people are not using the center channel for vocals, okay, we'll do it and we'll make it sound awesome. And that's why, you know. These EDM guys are going to come to me. That's right. Yeah. <laughs> it's all the Wild West. You know? there, there aren't many rules in this game. Right? You know, because uh, somebody said here, I would use the center, Big Jack 79. I would, I, I would say use the center to anchor. Some people have amazing centers. I would say the center should be the best speaker since it's primarily for music. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. You know, there's well, you just gave me an idea, idea. because um, now, like, do some albums and stuff like that. I'm, I'm thinking about Atmos. And I, I'm kind of like getting into like this like cinematic kind of like weird thing. So I'm looking at I'm like using a lot more like effects, like gunshots, not gunshots, but like car sounds and like special effects in the music. But I never thought to utilize the center channel for that. And that kind of would make sense of you using the center channel in, in combination with the LFE to hyphen all of that stuff up. So you, you kind of gave me a, a good idea on what I should try when I have like stems or anything that has any type of special effects. Santa Monica, man, call me. I'll come over. We hang out, and you know, yeah, we make some fire, bro. You know that. You know it's a, it's already going to be a party when you and I hang out, anyway. So. Oh yeah, bro. Yeah, bro. yeah. <laughs> it, it's just like it's inevitable. I hope the world is ready. <laughs> not. They're not. They're not. <laughs> So, okay. yeah. so do we have any other like heavy topics to cover because we're already way over broadcast time except that we didn't do a stunt race yeah. oh <laughs> oh yeah do you want to do I that think, uh, Jonathan has something to uh well we well, i mean we still have a couple show things to do the beat challenge and a few mm-hmm. other things so i think we need to wrap up the round table now mm-hmm. and uh just get back to the end of the show for anybody else that's still out there and live we got a hundred people watching today. hey that's awesome yeah uh, great, Rock Am. Thank you so much for joining us, dude. Yeah. Uh, such a oh, pleasure. Thank you, oh, man. Thank you such a pleasure. You are the man. I'm not worthy. Yeah, man. <laughs> yeah, man. I, I hey, man. I'd like to send you some stuff to, for mastering. Dude. I'll hit you up after. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Definitely, man. All right, guys. I'll see you. Thank you so much. Tomorrow, Later, bro. Tomorrow, man. Take care. All right, man. Later. Later. Boom. Back to Ecuador. Damn, that's a crazy transition. <laughs> I've been, I've been right. Studio B for a while. <laughs> yeah. Uh, all right, so back to the rest of the show. Goodbye, Man, that studio. Was, that was intense. Yeah. Oh. Oh. What are, uh, we, are we shutting off this mic? Or are you guys uh, still doing? No, let's leave it on. I think it's going to be. Uh, you can. You guys can mute that whenever we go back to music stuff, which I'm not sure what we're going to do right now. Okay. Uh, are we changing creation sessions? Well, I need to finish the show with the beat challenge. But um, what else do we need to do? Uh, do you have Marcus Manderson? Um, I let's run Marcus Manderson and prep for the beat challenge. So Marcus Manderson is going to bring you a segment on all things Atmos. And if you're uh, if you're still tuned in, if you missed earlier, check the description of the video you're watching right now. We have a ton of information in the description. We have uh, this Atmos Icebreakers, which is like a one sheet. It's like four sheets, but it's like everything a young mixer needs to know about Atmos, uh, and uh, and it'll get you so much further, so much faster. It's gonna answer so many of your questions, which are just like, what sample rate? What bit rate? What this rate? What that? It's, it's all in there. So go check the description. Thank you for tuning in for everybody tonight. It's been amazing. Now we're gonna go to Marcus Manderson, mixing night man of mystery, and he's gonna give you some Atmos tips. And then we'll be back for the beat challenge and wrap it up. See ya. Three minutes and 50 seconds. Whew. Wow. 
You want me to pull up the beach on? Yeah, please. Oh. Hey, Studio World. Goodbye to anybody that's hold still on, tuned on, in. Hold on, hold on. Go back, go back, go back. Yeah. Where are we going back to? Do we need Ken? Yo, Ken. Where are we going back to? Is there no audio on that? I think it might it has to be a uh, stream thing. Uh, uh, none of our assets are, are streaming. Is that what's going on? Yeah. Set me up is for it, the is, sprint uh, mix and I'll sprint. Uh, here, give me the um, thing. Give me the thing. Can you pull up? You can play videos on uh, StreamYard. Can you pull up that? Um, Do, do, do. Go. <laughs> Thank you all for hanging out with us tonight. Yeah. <clears throat> it's been pretty amazing. Um, we had a little bit of a rough start, but, you know, just like Atmos being the wild, wild west, when you're trying to live stream in Atmos and binaural and spatial audio. It's even wilder. <laughs> it's even wilder. Just, just the fact that we could even put this whole thing together is kind of a marvel to me. Yeah. And uh, so, yeah, it's been... Uh, all right. uh, it's awesome. been a challenge, it's but it's been awesome tonight. Here's the video. What's good, everyone? This is Marcus Manderson, Mixing Night Man of Mystery, back with another Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment. In this Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment, we're going to talk all about how humans can experience Dolby Atmos. Let's get into it. Now, regular audio, including surround sound, has this ring of sound directionality. Compared to Dolby Atmos, where you get a dome of sound directionality and motion, it is the most immersive audio experience. Dolby Atmos uses metadata to control which speakers will reproduce certain sounds. Some tools needed to experience Dolby Atmos include the source needs to be mixed in Atmos, the device needs to be able to decode uh, the audio in Dolby Atmos. Some decoding devices include the TV, a streaming device, or a stereo receiver. And your sound system must be Dolby Atmos compatible. The sound system may be the same as your decoding device. Some sources for Dolby Atmos include Blu-ray discs, streaming services such as Netflix, Disney+, Amazon Prime Video, and Apple TV+. Dolby Atmos music such as Apple Music, Tidal, and Amazon. You may have to be at a premium level for some of those platforms to experience the Atmos features. Some Dolby Atmos devices include Blu-ray players, some streaming devices if they are the higher end models, gaming consoles, some smart TV. Even though the built-in speakers are not the best, you want to look for the HDMI ARC or the eARC port and some sound bars, speakers such as the Sonos ARC and the Sonos ERA 300. Now, Dolby Atmos Music has different requirements from the Dolby Atmos for film and TV. Keep that in mind. Here are some things to keep in mind if you want to get a Dolby Atmos AV receiver or Dolby Atmos soundbars. AV receivers can be a little bit more complicated to set up. They can be more expensive as opposed to soundbars, which are simpler to set up. They are cheaper and they can also be expandable in some cases. Now, there are some TVs that are Dolby Atmos compatible. You want to look for TVs that have the Dolby Atmos Flex Connect option, which will allow you to expand those Dolby Atmos TVs with wireless speakers. Here's some more numbers for you. If you have a 5.1 or 7.1 sound system, you can keep your current setup and upgrade to Dolby Atmos with a Dolby Atmos receiver and add some additional height effect speakers. Speaking of speakers, you have 
things like 916. That basically tells you the height, uh, the number of channels in the system. So you could have a front left, front rear, center, wide left, wide right, surround left, surround right, rear left, rear right, a sub, three sets of height channels. You can have up to 64 speaker locations in a Dolby Atmos system. For headphones, the Apple TV 4K creates a virtualized Dolby Atmos experience to any Bluetooth headphones. Some specific Apple devices will also add the head tracking spatial audio. Now keep in mind that spatial audio is different from Dolby Atmos also. Uh, and then some uh, streaming services such as Apple Music, Tidal Hi-Fi, Amazon Music will allow you to stream Dolby Atmos music to your headphones if you have compatible headphones. Now, Samsung and Google have created a competitor to the Dolby Atmos experience. They are calling it the Immersive Audio Model Format, or the IAMF. This will be the first open source 3D spatial audio technology. It will create the ability to express sound vertically. It is an AI-based scene analysis and 3D audio effects, and it will also allow you to highly customize your audio. Now, if you want to dive in deeper on some of these sources of the material for this presentation, I will include links to these websites and the Discord group. I will also include this presentation in the Discord group, but you can go to the Digital Trends website to find out more about Dolby Atmos. You can also go to the productionexpert.com to find out more about the Samsung and Google IAMF plans. And that is all I have for you. This has been another Marcus Manderson Mixing Night Man of Mystery moment. Be safe and be well, everyone. All right. All right. Peace. We're back, baby. So uh, tonight, instead of starting the broadcast with the Sprint Mix as intended, I am going to wrap it up. Um, uh, and then maybe we'll get to the B challenge. <clears throat> so, uh, do I need to mute my mic or can you mute it in the control room? Okay. So, sprint mix, 10 minutes on the clock. This is an Atmos sprint mix. So, if you've seen me sprint stereo, you know, all I got to do is pull it up in two speakers and I'm good. But in Atmos, I have 10 minutes to take 25 stems, which gives me about 25 seconds per stem, and make every decision that I'm going to make about how to balance it in stereo and how to spread it out in Atmos. So this one's going to be fun. Uh, this is Taj Ferrant, uh, The House Always Wins. I produced and co-wrote this with Taj. Taj is a 14-year-old blues guitarist and artist vocalist from Australia. When, when my friends told me, like, hey, you really need to produce this guy. You need to check him out. I was like, 14 years old, no interest. Blues guitarist, no interest. Australia, no interest. And then I went and saw him live, and I was like very interested. So now I'm producing him. Kid is a savant. He's brilliant. <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I think he's going to have a decades, decades long career. So where's my sprint? Sprint. Boom. Okay. 10 minutes on the clock. Whatever happens, happens. Best rough mix I can possibly do in 10 minutes in Atmos.
Cause I got
Cause I got five cars, you got yours, I got mine, five cars, give me a hand this time, plus your bed, drop to the river, time to show your empty hand, the house always wins, damn, the house always wins. Cause I got five cars, you got yours, I got mine, five cars, give me a hand this time, plus your bed, flop the river, baby show your empty hand, the house always wins, damn, the house always wins, the house always wins. Oh, yeah. Well, <clears throat> that came out pretty darn well for oh, 10 yeah. minutes. 10 minutes. Word. So, yeah, that's all, you know, we've all been talking all night about just tapping into your instinct and your experience and listening to your gut. And that's all sprint mixing is. And it's the same in Atmos. You know, I try and get it mostly balanced in stereo, but I've also got my sides as a second mix bus. So I know as I'm building, if I just want a little more space as I'm building my stereo, just move it to the sides open up some more space, move things around, try things out. If I don't like them, I can always move them again. Right. And, you know. I say you put the uh, the cowbell in the back there. Yeah. Right? It, 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 I played on it yesterday, and I was just like, man, this thing's loud. Yeah. Let's, let's, move, let's move it away, <laughs> you know? Right. Yeah, yeah. Awesome. Yeah, that, that's a fun one to do. I think uh, we need to end the broadcast um, by, uh, I'm not going to play the beach. Uh, should I play? We're already... 1035 fuck why not let's play the bee challenge I mean, shit 
Thank you all. If anybody out there is still hanging out with us, where the hell is the Bee Challenge? Yeah, 83, 83 <coughs> still hanging out. Well, if I can find the Bee Challenge, I will certainly play it. Um, but I do not see it. Uh, I think that's on me. Um, Dominic cooked it all up, and we judged it. And it's Amy uh, still here. I don't know where it is. Um, and it's way over time. But I will tell you uh, that Johnny Kyle is the winner of the ARC Studio. Uh, thank you to every single person that submitted a beat for this. It was, you guys don't know, when I listen to the beat challenge, I sit here and I press play and I listen to the whole thing, everybody's beat in order, start to finish. And I am constantly blown away by the different directions. I feed you guys up one musical starter and the directions that you guys take it in is so inspiring to us. When we hear this stuff, we talk about it behind the scenes all the time. We're like, you know, did you hear Brian Pepin's thing? That sounded so crazy. And that against Sam Champagne and, you know, what Jason Lee did. And man, you guys just make such cool music. And we all love with the Beat Challenge the way everybody influences everybody else and collaborates across oceans. And it's been really one of the uh, magic elements of Mixing Night is seeing the collaborations and inter interactions happening uh, around the world with this kind of stuff. So <clears throat> sorry that we had a little bit rough around the edges broadcast tonight and that I can't uh, do the Beat Challenge. Um, everything was down to the wire. and. But uh, hopefully you guys love the show tonight. Uh, we worked very hard on the cookup, and thank you so much, Techno Dad, for flying out yeah, to Cincinnati to from thank you. California, thank you, and Mark Abrams driving down from Columbus, and Rock Am tuning in from vacation. Uh, we super appreciate all of you guys. Uh, to every um, company that helped out, uh, Pure Mix, Audio Movers, uh, Sennheiser, and uh, there was there's one other. Pure Mix, Audio Movers, Sennheiser, and IK Multimedia. IK. Um, and I feel like there's somebody else, but of course, Mixing Night Audio. Uh, and if you're still tuned in, we are selling. Uh, we have a sale on the Mixing Night Audio plugins right now. Uh, go get yourself some lol comp in your life. You will not <laughs> regret it. I promise you. Um, just ask Mark Abrams over there. That's right. We showed off uh, lol comp on uh, Mark Abrams' uh, great big plug-in show on Pure Mix. And I think we're going to do a greenhouse uh, show sometime in the near future. Yeah, yeah. And uh, whenever Mixing Night Audio puts out our new plugin that we're cooking up right now, uh, we'll do that one too. Awesome. So thank you both for joining me. Thank you, everybody, who helped put this broadcast together. Uh, there was just a mountain of work that went into this, and we Nolan super and appreciate Jonathan. everything. Yeah. Nolan, and Jonathan, Kyle. I, I don't want to start rattling off everybody because there were so many Lori, people who really helped. Lori is uh, huge. Dominic, I mean, everybody. Uh, it's such a, in the you control know. Room rock. <clears throat> yeah. So uh, for now, we're going to sign off. If you're still out there, thank you so much for tuning in. And hopefully we leveled you up a little bit uh, on Atmos night. Check the description for uh, pro users tips. Uh, and check the description for an Atmos icebreakers, which is like, everything that you need to know that you don't yet know. So uh, tons of supplemental. Thanks for joining us. We'll see you in May. Take care.